Good morning, everybody. It is day two. First of all, let's make sure you can hear me. Sam Stroll, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? A thumbs up, Sam, if you can hear me. That means put your thumb up if you can hear me. Oh, a hand is up. That's even better than a thumb. Everybody, this is, like I said, day two of the New Agent Class 23-11. Today's a long day. We're going to get into HP Pro, so hopefully all of you actually have access. So let's see if we can do better than day one. New Agent Class 23-011, otherwise known as 23-11. How are you doing this morning? Great. Good. Good. Awesome. Fantastic. Good. Good. Mm. Great. Good. Except trying to download a, um, Windows on this Mac has been the worst thing that's ever happened to me because I can't figure it out. Ooh, that is not a good thing. So first and foremost, I play music, let everyone know I'm going to be coming in, trying to get us hyped up, trying to get us, you know, engaged. And then I say, hey, everybody, good morning. On a scale of one to five, with five being absolutely no doubt the best ever, and a one being, eh. Ashton, how do you think the class did this morning? You mean as a reaction? Yeah. No, we did like a three and a half. Yeah, no, not even a three. <laughs> so we need to come together, everybody. We are a team. We are a team trying to persevere through the next two weeks together. And part of that means <clears throat> we have to help me. I'm going to help you. I'm committed to you because you got to help me. So yesterday, yesterday, the pipes underneath my sink decided to leak pretty significantly. So last night I'm in there jimmying stuff around, going to Home Depot, buying PVC, cutting. And this morning I cemented everything together. So I personally am running off about four hours of sleep, but I'm gonna bring my A game because today is an incredibly important day and I wanna make sure that all of us know HB Pro by the time we're done with today. Did anybody have an opportunity to meet with their upline yesterday? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. So let's see. Hands raised. So Billy Elliott, you met with your upline yesterday. What happened? Um, let me lower my hand here. <clears throat> um, we went over kind of what the expectations are for us coming into the business. We went over what it's going to take, how many phone calls you need to make, each day, how often you have to set up appointments, what the percentage of those are, uh, people showing up. We went over, um, well, some of us watched Torian give a live uh, kind of presentation to a veteran. So that was really cool. Did he sell it? It kicked me out right before he got to that. Ashton was on too. Ashton, did he sell yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, he sold it. Oh, awesome. How many? It looked uh, like he was going to sell it. So. How many referrals did he get? Uh, I think uh, three or two or five, somewhere in between there. And then he's setting up his um, daughter for tomorrow, today. And how much did he sell it for? Uh, right around 1400 1400 So if it was in fact 1400 let me ask Michelle Spinner, how much would you have gotten paid on that deal if you had sold it? Um, <clears throat> ideally the full, I think it's the full 1500 if I remember from the breakdown. Well, first of all, it's 1400 and no, you don't get the full 1400 Do you know how much you get paid? Uh, Does anybody here know how much they get paid? Raise your yes. hand if you know how you get paid. All right, so some of us do. Michelle, do you have an idea yet? Um, yeah, I, I isn't it with 750? No. Or maybe it's 375. Can't <laughs> so Michelle, okay, you guys put your hands down. Michelle, if I put you in a situation where you sold something today to a client, if I put 375 into your bank account, you'd be happy, right? 
Yeah, it's more money than I have now. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do this together, and I'm going to use my calculator because I'm not that quick, particularly after four hours of sleep. We're going to take 1400 The contract that you have now is a new agent contract. That contract means you get credited with 50% of the, of the uh, ALP. In this case, the annualized life premium is 1400 so you're going to multiply 1400 times 0.5 and that gives you 700 and then you're going to get advanced of that how much Michelle do you know how much will be advanced to you um that i do not know 75% so if you had sold this deal we would have put in your bank account $525 okay now if I had so no, let's say Torian sold that deal, so he gets credit with fourteen hundred. He gets sixty percent credit of that deal, which means eight hundred and forty, and he's going to get advanced sixty percent of that. He would get five hundred and four dollars in his account, but in three months he gets the remaining forty percent as well. You all get advanced 75%, but you don't get the remaining 25%. And the reason for that is that 25% off any sale you make is used to pay your essays or your trainers. Does that make sense to everybody? Once you get past, uh, I think your 30 or 60 days, then you get full credit and you would be on a 60% payout. So after your 30 days, we're gonna take 1400, we're gonna multiply that times point six which is going to give you 840 times 0. 0.6 again you're going to get 504 but you're going to get the remainder three months later dropped into your account it's what i call the residual okay you get an advance and then you get the residual and then a year later you get the renewal which in your case will be worth three percent of the 1400 so 1400 times 0. 0.03 is equal to 42 dollars any questions about that? Yes, Dale, your hand is up. How can I help you? Oh, you know what? I meant to put it back down. Sorry. Okay, because I'm going to ask you guys from time to time, how much money did you make? How much money do, could you have made? As good salespeople, we need to know that every single time, not because we're worried about <clears throat> maximizing that number. What we're worried about is making sure we understand how much should be showing up in our financial reports. And you get a financial report once a week. It's called your advance report. We'll have all the information <clears throat> in there on every deal that you were credited and whether that deal went through or not. Yes, Jake, how can I help you? Um, after the 50% commission, so that's the 700 on the 1400 ALP, what is the um, percentage we get advanced? Did you say 75%? As a new agent, you'll get 75% advanced. And then once you are in the field and are no longer considered a new agent, you'll go to a 60% and you'll get the full amount, 60% up front and then 40% later. Okay, so now here we go. Let's ask somebody. Okay, Dominic, you can ask me first, what's up? So when does the, the rest come back? That three months you said? Usually it's about three months later. And the reason for that is if you sell a deal and we advanced you 100% and it canceled or lapsed, we claw the whole thing back. So what we do, two things. One, we don't claw the whole thing back all at once. And secondarily, we know based on statistics that if people keep their policies for at least 60 days, they'll keep them for usually the 13 months. So that's why we set up uh, the advance in one way and then the residual on the second way. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. And keep in mind your bonuses get paid up front every week, but that's not an advance. That's just the bonus that's paid straight up. Okay. And we'll go through compensation next week a little bit more if you guys have any questions about that. All right. So Ronald, are you in class uh, Tuesday? Tuesday Perkins, I do not recognize your name. It's pronounced Tuesday. Oh, my apologies. Tuesday. I still don't recognize your name, though. Are you new today? Yes. 
Okay, and who told you to attend the class? JT Curry. JT Curry, did he register you? Did you get an email from me? Yes. Okay, great, so you're registered. And Taylor Norman, you said you were new as well? Taylor Norman? No, I was here yesterday. I'm just at work right now. Oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't you, Taylor. It was uh, EJ. Hi, I am also new, yes. I okay. wasn't here yesterday. Is your first name right, EJ? Yeah. It's, it's Ege, oh. just if I have. Ege. Okay, yeah. I apologize. All right, Ege. It's all good. It's all good. So we have Ege and we have uh, Tuesday. Oh, I hope I pronounced that right. Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes, Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, awesome. Tuesday, do you have your camera working? Yes. Okay, and thank you, Alexander. Hi there. Alexander. Yeah, I was not here for Memorial Day Monday yesterday, so I'm you for the class. Okay, so can you turn your camera on for us, please? Yeah, absolutely. I'm in the car right now, awesome. so you should be able to work right now. Hello. Yeah, no Thank you. All right. Are you headed to the uh, a computer somewhere, Alexander? Yeah, I'm leaning over to my girlfriend's place. Uh, I have to go attend class and drop some off here in an hour, but I'll be here for the rest of the day. I'll be listening in for the entirety of this morning. Okay, awesome. That's great. Uh, for all of you that are new, at least I have the three people. Uh, let's do that. Oh, hey, James, if you can hear me, I did change that. So hold on one second, James. Is he here? He sent me an email. All right, hold on. The new code is 2468. And we have other people that are joining up here. So just bear with me, everybody, while I get all this sorted. James stepped out. Okay, yeah, so we have the new code. All right, so what we do every morning on days two through 10 is we fill out what's called a DRB report. You know, DRB stands for Dials Reached Booked. And the reason I have you do it is that you will start to receive a DRB report and your leadership receives it every single morning. And it shows your activity from the day before. So I just wanna show you what this looks like so that we can fill it out together every morning once I send you the link. So this is the DRB report. You're gonna show what basically your phone activity, you're gonna put your first and last name, your email, your class number, market you're currently joining and the name of your trainer and whoever is your RGA. And what I wanna know is, did you work with your field trainer, SA or your upline? Just anybody in your hierarchy, did you actually work with them? And work with them means, did you have a conversation? Right. And then did you do some sort of activity? They give you direction, like practice your scripts, listen to calls, listen to the presentations, whatever it is. However, if all you did was text them and they said, hey, I'll get with you and they never did, then the answer would be no, you did not work with them. All we're trying to determine is how often you have the opportunity to work with someone in your hierarchy. And then you're going to fill out how many calls you made yesterday. I didn't expect anybody to make any calls, just to be clear. How many people that you reached of those phone calls? So if you made 20 phone calls yesterday and you talked to two people, then you would say I had 10 phone or 20, I reached two. And of those people that I reached, how many appointments did you book? So if you were calling on behalf of me and you made 100 calls yesterday, you reached 10 people and you booked one, right? Then it would be 110 and one. And then at the bottom, I wanna know how many presentations you observed yesterday as well as how many sales and the sales are defined as where you hear or see the client <clears throat> getting uh, the DocuSign. Actually, you can't see them getting DocuSign, but you can hear the agent talk to them saying, hey, I sent you an email. It has the DocuSign link. Go ahead and execute that, fill that out. That to me is considered a sale. And the reason I have a differentiation between presentations and sales is a presentation. I want you to see how they navigate through everything. A sale means typically they've had to overcome some type of objection, whether somebody wanted to think about it, whether it was price, whatever the case may be, if they've successfully overcome an objection or they just said, hey, I want to buy, I want to know that that's an actual sale. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Yeah? 
Okay, excellent. So what I'm going to do is copy this link and I'm going to put it in the chat. And we do this every single day, everybody, because I do use this as a form of attendance that you have submitted. So let's make sure that that gets in there. So you guys do that really quick and let me call or let me see if I can't get to James Hodges real quick. Show. I think the, the class number needs to be updated again because it still only has two. Oh, is it? Oh, you know what? Good call. So let me do that right now for everybody. Let's go class number. Where is it at? Yes, it does. Thank you. 23-011, 23-012. Okay, just refresh that screen and it should be updated for everybody. Yeah, we have a bunch of people that will hopefully make it in. All right, I should show up. Ooh, What's the class number? 23-011. Thank you. Yeah, of course, absolutely. All right, so what we will do is we will play, we're going to play a video that shows someone doing a presentation so that you can see it. Actually, all of you that watched presentations yesterday, could you see the screen that the client sees or could you just see over the shoulder? How did it work? You could see the we, screen? We could see the yeah, screen. You could see the whole screen. Okay. So not every one of us got opportunity to do that. So what I'm going to do is play a presentation of a veteran market. And for all of us, it's not the veteran market per se that I want you to pay attention to. It's just the navigation through Zoom, how he talks to the client. You can open up any of the scripts and you can sort of follow along with what he's doing, depending upon what market you're in. So for Canada, obviously, it's the no cost legal will kit or the McGruff. And for the U.S., it's either going to be the veteran market because that's the one he's running or the credit union market. So we're going to watch that just so you have an idea of the flow. And then I'm going to jump into a lot of stuff with HP Pro. The reason I'm waiting is because I've got five people that are trying to get into the class. Uh, Ige, how can I help you? Hi, so I'm filling out the form. Enter the name of your SA slash trainer. Would that be you? No, gosh, no. I'm not good enough to be the trainer, my friend. Uh, who told you to attend the course? Uh, Jatvika. Yeah, that's so who I would all right. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. It'll be your RGA or Jesse Doherty, either one, and she will sounds be good. your. Okay. All right. Thanks. Audrey, what is going on over there? What is happening? Uh, just paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Audrey says, I'm just paying attention. Did you get to watch any or work with your upline? Yeah, I did. Um, I, I think I talked to her for about an hour. So Holy <laughs> yeah, I was kind of telling her, you know, okay, I don't have this. I don't see this. Um, so I think I'm still waiting on a few things. Um, I'm sure I'll talk to her today again, but it's, it's always good. I always learn a lot every time I talk to her. So <laughs> who was your upline? Um, Nicole uh, LePage. Sanders. And then there's 
yeah, Francisco oh, and yeah. <laughs> yep, and they all went through the course, so they know all the stuff. And Nicole is, uh, I like Nicole. She keeps it yeah, real. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Muhammad, your hand is up. What can I do for you? So I just created my uh, new email, as you advised uh, this morning. Should I put mm -hmm. in the new email with the with this form? Yeah. All right. Yeah, absolutely. So send and you should, too. Yeah, send me an email saying, hey, this is my new email. And put in the title, class 23-011. Okay, thank you. Because I use my Gmail filters, and I do all of that to make sure that I can get to everybody. Sam, good morning. How are you doing? Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. You're going to run my, my other class, the one word answer. Come on, expound <laughs> a little bit. Speak extemporaneously. Help me out. It's it's a beautiful day in Northwest Ohio. <laughs> Northwest Ohio. Nice. Never been to Ohio. Not once. But I will get there. I guarantee it. All right. So what we're going to do is figure out how to do this. Okay. We're going to do it differently then. Uh, okay, here we go. I am, I promise you, I'm going to get this. Just bear with me really quickly. And then for those of you that are new <clears throat> to today, please put your email into the chat because I need to send you access to all the scripts and all the course materials that you need to have because you weren't here yesterday, you did not get that. <laughs> all right, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna do this, we'll go through it. We're gonna watch a good portion of it, but not the entire thing, because the entire thing is 44 minutes long. But what I want you to see is the opening. And this was done about two years ago. So the reason I bring this up is I want us to see what the differences are in the new script, uh, things of that nature. And I want you to tell me your feedback and how he connects with the client, okay? Hey, James, if you can hear me. James, are you there? Mr. Hodges? Yes. How are you, Sam? I'm good, man. Thank you so much for joining us. You had five people, give or take. Uh, give or take, yeah. Okay. Are they able to? Are they able to get in? Um. So I got some people that are not able to get in for some reason. I don't know. I was gonna try to copy the link. No, the <laughs> the issue probably is they need to have because of some problems that I had uh, two classes ago. I was getting Zoom bombed. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so everybody so just needs to have a Zoom account. It doesn't cost anything. They just sign up, get a Zoom account, and then they can use that to log in. Perfect. Okay, that that makes sense. I kind of figured that's why you changed the uh, the password. <laughs> um, yeah, you know it. Yeah, we. I think we had the same issue. So no worries. Yep. Um, I will let them know right now. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, yep. Yeah, and do me one more favor because I'm about to play a video for everybody. Can you let your guys know or your people know that when they come in, just to put their email in the chat so that I can send them the uh, day one email with the access to all the course materials? Perfect. So let me check some just to make sure everybody's here. We got Brand. Yeah. Ashton, what can I do for you? Hey, Sam. Um, did you get my email last night? I sent you my new work email that I made. I may have, but I was, remember, I was, I was working piping. Yeah. Do you want me to just put it in the chat then? No, no. If you sent me an email already, that's fine. What I'm asking okay. James to do is he has five, or give or take five brand new people. Mm -hmm. They don't know anything. They weren't here. So I just need them to put their emails in the chat so I can send them day one. You don't need it because okay. you were here. Okay. All right. I got you. Um, I'm going to get that sent to you right now, or at least get them all in and get that taken care of. Thank you so much, Sam. You have uh, been killing it and keep it going. Okay. All right, James. Thank you. Take care. All right, everybody. Let me share my screen. We're going to watch this video. And again, as always, I'm looking for three top takeaways so that I can ask you and that you can't copy. Audrey, are you tracking with me? Yeah. And who did I ask to be? Was it Jessica? Jessica, I asked you to be my kind of overall 
parking lot per well you, your title is sure. jessica if i remember right. correctly <laughs> yeah. all right all right jessica perfect so let me go ahead and play this and i will see you on the other side hello hello Bruce, I think you're muted. Oh, hi. There we go. There we go. Are we good? All right, perfect. All right, let me turn up the uh, Janet. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, I just can. turned up the volume. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, how are you guys doing today? Very good, thank you. Yeah. Good, good. Well, I'm glad that we were able to get this done for you guys virtually today. But Janet, you know, let me ask you, what branch of the military did you serve in? Navy. Navy, okay. And how long have you been discharged for? Oh gosh, like over twenty years. <laughs> a long time. More like twenty-five. Yeah. More like twenty-five. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I think I heard right over the phone that, that you're also a veteran as well. Is that right, Bruce? Yes, I am. A Navy, uh, Navy Dental Corps officer. Is that where you guys met? Yeah, it is. Uh, NAS uh, Whidbey Island, Oak Harbor, Puget Sound. Nice. Well, let me first start by saying thank you for your guys' service to our country. I don't think our nation's veterans hear that enough. So again, uh, thank you. Uh, what I'm going to start by doing, guys, is just sharing my screen with you. You guys let me know when you guys can see it, okay? Okay. Give me one second. We're going to pull up your information here. You guys are out in California, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Nice. Very hot. <laughs> All right. Let me go ahead and share my screen with you. And that way we can get everything popped up, make sure we're on the same page, okay? Yeah. All right. Now, uh, can you guys see it? Yes, yes. you can. <clears throat> Perfect. So this is actually a copy of the email that you guys received when you requested uh, your very own will kit. Uh, like it says in the email, it's just my job to issue out your benefits, explain all your options. After answering all the questions that you have about your options, hope you get enrolled into anything you may qualify for. Uh, the veteran service organizations would like your opinion on a report form. It's going to go back to them. That way they know that we met. You got everything explained to you and I did my job. Does that sound fair? Yeah, sure. That's right. Perfect. Now, as the email explains, they obviously don't know you and Bruce's personal situation there at home. What they found is that members had a gap in their personal uh, burial and uh, insurance benefits. So what they did was create a benefit program for all of the uh, veterans to help fill in that gap. So they're actually just going to have us meet for a few reasons. Uh, first is to issue out your burial and will kit for veterans, go through uh, your sponsorship program, finally go through the permanent life insurance that they set up for you. Uh, now, good news is nothing for you to have to write down or memorize. Uh, this is all going to get emailed over to you once we wrap up. So you kind of just okay. sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay. Sound fair? Sure. All right. Now, first thing that they're going to have me cover with you is your burial and will kit for veterans. Now, uh, this is uh, has three different sections to it. The first is going to be a family information guide. Second is going to be a last will and testament. The third is going to be the three important facts about your VA burial benefits. Now, uh, you're going to see some phone numbers and some email addresses and websites there. Anything that you see there in red pertain to actually your burial benefits or your life insurance through the VA. Uh, but let me ask you, um, do you guys currently have a will drawn up yet? Well, we bounced around a little bit. Before I married Janet, I did, but things have changed. And that's something we need to uh, yeah. look into, Andrew. Yeah. yeah, well, they're going to take care of that for you in the second step of your kit. But it's also really important that you fill out this first part, okay? And I'm going to walk you through how to do that today. We'll do some of it together, and then other parts uh, you guys can do in the privacy of your own home, okay? Okay. All right. Now, uh, there's th three different sections, as I mentioned. The family information guide is the first. Now, this part isn't intended to replace a will, but it is important that you fill it out. The reason why is they found that members' benefits weren't getting used, and it's usually for one of three reasons. Either your family doesn't know where they are, your family doesn't know what you have, or your family doesn't know the company that they'll actually come through. This section will eliminate all three. Now, Janet and Bruce, this is actually going to be for you guys to keep at home with your important paperwork. It's not something that you're going to turn into a veteran service organization and you don't send it into the insurance company. This is just for your use in records. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. yeah. 
All right, so we already got some of your information in there, Janet, from the online response that you put in there, but what was a good date of birth for you, or the only one, I guess? Yes, <laughs> it's 10-28-1959. Okay, great. And then again, Janet, 959 at iCloud, that works? Yes. I got the 858-336-1299? Yes. And then you're in San Diego. Yeah. Right? Right. Okay, perfect. And then we got your husband, Bruce, and it's B-R-U-C-E. Yeah. And then Smith, right? Yes. And what's a good date of birth for you, Bruce? Uh, January 13, 1949. 1949. Okay. And then you guys said you're both Navy. Is that right? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Now, the next section is probably the most important. This is going to be your persons to be notified section. Now, persons to be notified is for when something happens to you. They're going to suggest that you fill out three family, three friends, as well as two other service members that you know. Um, so when something happens to either one of you, obviously each other would take care of it. When something happens to the both of you, who would be the first person that you would want notified? For me, I would have uh, Sharon Wolf. S-H-A-R-O-N? Right. And what was the last name? W-O-L-F. Okay, in relationship? Sister. Sister. Okay, and is she married? Yes. And her husband's name? Is Craig, C-R-A-I-G, Wolf. Okay, and what city are they in? They're in uh, Chesapeake. Chesapeake. It's called Chesapeake. C H E S A. Yeah. There's an A in the middle. Chesapeake. C H E S A. P E A K E. You had the E right at the end there. Yeah, Chesapeake, Virginia. Virginia. Right. Okay, and what's a good phone number for them? You might want to um, grab either one of you might want to grab your phone just for. Yeah, let, I, I've got mine. Let me just check okay. it real quick because, yes, I do not memorize all these phone numbers. <laughs> I haven't memorized the phone number for probably 20 years. <laughs> um, I know the start is 757, I believe. Let me just see. Yeah, 757 415. Three, three, five, seven. Okay, and who would be next after Sharon? Um, after Sharon, geez, Paul? I, yeah, I think my brother, Paul, P-A-U-L, Paul, uh -huh. B-A-L-L. -L. Sorry, I didn't hear that first part. What was the... Uh, was Ballman, that? it's B-A-L-L-M-A-N, and that's and brother. That's brother. And, and then is he married? married? And Jan, J A N, mm -hmm. Ballman, B A L L M A N. Wait, What's I got a phone number for them. Yes, hold on just a second. Let me just see. What city are they in, Bruce? Uh, they're in New Jersey. Paul, yes. Janice, uh, brother Paul? Yes, yes. it's uh, Monroe Township, yeah. New Jersey. M O N R O E Township. New Jersey. New Jersey. And, and a good phone number? number is... Yeah, you got to put township there, Andrew. Oh, okay. Township. And that number is 908 uh -huh. 348 6561. Okay. And then who's the third one there for family? So we got your sister, your brother. Oh, and I have another sister. And the last one is. Kathleen, K-A-T-H-L-E-E-N, Ives, I-V-E-S, and the sister, and she's also married. Sister, what's her husband's name? Uh, My Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, Ives. Oh gosh, I gotta get their phone number too, hold on. What city are they in? Are they, they are uh, Chesapeake in also. Chesapeake as well. Just hit the eye on the side here. Huh? Yeah, they're in Chesapeake also, yeah. And that number is 757-2-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-
Okay, so we got the family. Now they did suggest any friends, neighbors, or coworkers. Bruce, uh, Janet, who would be the first friend that comes to mind? Um, Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-L, -L E, Waco, W-A-C-C-O. Oh, two C's, okay. No, just one. Is it one or oh. It's just one C. One? Yeah. She's just a friend. Yeah. Is she a friend or is she a best friend? She is a neighbor. Oh, she's a neighbor. A friend and a neighbor. So she lives right across the which way. Which one would yeah. you prefer? For which you think friend or you think neighbor? Friend. Na friend. 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 More personal. <laughs> yes. And, and she, then she's married? No. Okay. And then uh she's and that's people, also she in San Diego. Diego. And then that's California. You got a good phone number for her? Yes, the phone number is 310-341-4518. All right, and then who would be the next friend? Um, oh, you're going deep here. Right. <laughs> I think who else oh, down there would be good to, to use? Um, well, they suggest, like I said, that you do three family, three friends. Oh, do you want, is no, this wait, wait, nobody wait. related to Bruce? Can we do Bruce's yeah, family? Yeah, we can do Bruce's, of course. Oh, well, so well, get yours. Hey, Andrew, are you going to uh, question me just like you did with Janet, or is this? No, you guys can do it together. Okay, so you can give Gil. Give Gil All right, Smith. my brother Gil, Gil Smith. G I L L? No, one L. Yeah, I know. Gil Smith. This is family, right? Yes, yeah. this one is family. Right. So we'll, well have it up here to your family list. Okay. Yeah. So, so you don't have any of my family members for contact then? Yeah, well, you use anyone now. And that's well, brother. We, yeah, you don't have to do three of the neighbors or three of the friends. We can just get all the family if you want on there. Okay. Okay. I might all right, so Gil Smith, and that's brother, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he lives in Grants Pass, G R A N T S, Grants Pass. And that's in Oregon. All right. And is he married? Yes, he is. And his wife's name is Robin, R O B I N. Mm -hmm. Smith. Smith as well. Smith, yeah. Okay. And is he a 503? 503? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, he's 541-916-9772. Oh, okay. okay. And did you have another uh, family or did you have a friend, Bruce? Uh, I should probably go with another family member. Okay. That's my, my sister, Lori, L-A-U-R-I-E. And her last name is McGee. N O U R I E. L A U R I E. Oh, I that. Yeah. Sorry. L A U R I E. McGee. M C G E E. Yeah. And that's my she sister. Married. Yeah, she is. And her husband's name is Richard. Also McGee. Oops. Let me uh, get, because you're going to ask for the phone number. Let me get that. Um, what city is uh, Lori in? Uh, they are in um, Garden City, New York. You got family all over the place. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, and I think last we just need the phone number on that. Yeah, Lori's phone number is 516. Three five four eight nine eight five. Eight nine eight five. Okay, now did you have a friend, Bruce, that's close to you there in San Diego? That yeah. Would okay. Yeah. Would uh, let's put one of my friends in there. Uh, Rick R I C K. Mm -hmm. Mac Donald M A C. And then Donald D O N A L D. He's a Navy shipmate of mine. Oh, okay. Well, is he? He's a he's a veteran. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's put him down under service member then. Okay. Great. Um, Capital D. 
service member, right? Yes. Yeah, it's you got to spell his last name with a capital D. Yeah, there you go. And you said he's Navy. Yeah. Yes. Is he married? Yes. yes. His last wife's name is Zaida. Z A I D A. Also McDonald. Does she do a lowercase D or? A it's the same as as above. You got to. There's no space in McDonald. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, what city are they in? Uh, Chula Vista, C H U L A. C H U L A. Vista. E S A. No, there's there's a, there are two words. Oh. So oh, cap space. capital B, yeah. yeah. There, there you go. go. I should have said space, and that's uh, yeah. California. Yeah, that's that's a suburb of San Diego. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what's a good phone number for? Um. McDonald's. Here we go. Uh, his cell is 619-920-4653. What was it? 53. Five, three. Did you have any other service members yourself, uh, Janet, or were we just leaving uh, Rick? Uh, actually, sister. my sister, the one, the first one was actually Navy. Oh, okay. I can mark. You're saying Sharon? Yes. Okay, I'll mark her as that. Um, does that all look good to you guys for your persons to be notified when something happens to you? Yes. I think that covers it pretty yes. well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit save on that. So that way we got that locked in for you. Um, now, next is you're going to have a place on here for your banking information. That way when something happens to you, people know what accounts to close, where your last will and testament is going to be located at. Again, we're going to go through that in the second step of your kit. You have a place there for all of your insurance policies. Now, did you guys convert any of your SGLI into VGLI when you separated from service? No. no. Okay. And did, did you guys have any life insurance that you took yeah. out by the work? Yes. Okay. And was that like a 10 year, 20 year, 30 year term? Um, USAA Universal for me. Oh, like a universal life? And Bruce has USA uh, term? term, term yeah. life. Okay. The reason why they have me ask, they just suggest that you put down anything that you have that's temporary or that may expire or that, you know, Jenny, you may cash out of down in okay. pencil. Anything Mine's else? Mine's good to what, 96? Uh, so you're 96, yeah. yes. Yeah. And then anything that you have that's permanent, obviously you put in there in 10. Make sense? Now, yeah. a new update there is going to be your digital account. So that's things for like your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter, if you guys have stuff like that. So people yeah. will know how to be able to access that for you. Then yeah, we don't we don't use uh, social media very much. Yeah, me, I, I actually don't do that either. Yeah, but um, this last section is pretty important. This is going to be your funeral service requests. You know, let me ask you: Have either one of you guys given any thought to what you want to done, like earth burial or cremation? Okay. Yeah, both of us are on the cremation. Okay, I'll go ahead and put that in there. And then, were either one of you guys going to be interned in one of the state or national cemeteries? Well, you know. Not myself, but Bruce was thinking uh, he might. I, I might. Um, well, why we? Kind of, yeah, but you know, kind of thinking. We're, it's well, one of the things we haven't both decided. You know, the, the <laughs> National Cemetery, the gorgeous National Cemetery, Point Loma, at yeah. the entrance to Rose San Diego Rose. Harbor, it's Harbor cool. is uh, it's all filled up. But I don't know if they still have space for urns. Well, they're going to have me actually go through with you in the first okay. step of this kit exactly what you guys are entitled to and cover okay. with that. Uh, and then uh, they actually set up a certificate. It's called the Freedom of Choice. It's going to take care of either earth burial or cremation. Most importantly, all your final expenses. They'll have me run through that with you before we wrap up. But as you guys can see, this first section, it's like a roadmap. You know, it's not necessarily for you. It's for your family. So that way, when something does happen, they know exactly what to do step by step, as well as where everything is. Does that all make sense so far? Yes. Okay. Now the second part is pretty cool. This is your last will and testament kit. This is actually will writing instruction and guidance for the US. In it, it's gonna have all the reasons why you guys need to write slash update a will. Uh, and then it's gonna walk you through the seven steps that you guys will fill out, which they don't have me go through with you. Uh, they have you guys do that, um, that you need to complete in order to do your last will and testament. But what makes this part of your guide really cool is that once you do that, 
you can actually go to americawills.com forward slash will kit. You type in that promo code that's provided there for you at no cost, and they actually send you back a last will and testament at no cost to you, Janet, no cost to you either, Bruce. So that's pretty awesome, right? That is nice. Yeah. 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 Now, the third and final thing that they have me cover with you guys is the three important facts about your VA burial benefits. Now, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but over 1,700 veterans pass away daily. And generally, there's little to no veteran government benefits for their funeral or cremation services. Now, your guys' VA benefit book is over 64 pages long. I'm sure you've read it cover to cover, sits on your nightstand. Oh, right yeah. <laughs> yeah. But for all of the Hi, veterans Lauren. and families that haven't, what they had us do, or excuse me, what they did rather, was condense everything down to the three most important facts pertaining to your burial benefits. That's what they had me cover with you. So the first one is that, like you were saying, Bruce, you can't reserve space in a VA national cemetery ahead of time. Now, they did make it possible a couple years back for you to be able to pre-register with a national cemetery. Right. What that just simply means is that you can get the paperwork done. It just doesn't guarantee you a spot. Now, Bruce, like you mentioned, the VA operates over 143 national cemeteries, of which 77 are currently open for both new casket and cremation interments, and 17 will accept new internments of cremated remains only. Okay. Now, does that first part make sense so far? Yeah. Okay. Second thing they want me to have you cover with you is what would be included if you chose to be buried or interned in a state or a national cemetery. So you get an assigned grave site or uh, mausoleum if space is available. You get opening and closing of the grave. You get a grave liner for casket remains, headstone, or marker. You get care at no cost to the family. So the easiest way to look at this is uh, everything before the cemetery gates is what your family would be responsible for. So both like you guys both said, like the cost of your cremation, your funeral service, your brochures, your handout, like all of that stuff is your family's responsibility. Everything past the cemetery gate, that's what they would take care of. Does that make sense so far? Yes. Sure. Wow, that's okay. nice. Now, the third uh, thing that they have me cover with you is what financial compensation your family would be entitled to if you chose not to be buried or interned in a state or national cemetery. So the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs does not cover all of the funeral or cremation arrangements of honorably discharged veterans. So you get up to $300 for a burial allowance, up to $828 for a plot allowance, up to $2,000 for service-related deaths, but you guys are both obviously separated from service, uh, $2,000 for certified non-active duty service-related deaths, really important veterans caskets or urns are not free unless the death occurs while on active duty. Makes sense. Okay. Now, spouses, dependents, and survivors, they're eligible for a presidential memorial certificate. They also can receive a burial flag. Surviving spouses and children may be eligible for burial in a national cemetery. That's even if they predecease uh, the veteran. And spouses and dependent children are eligible for a government headstone or marker but that's only if they're buried in a national or a state veteran cemetery. Okay. Now, does that all make sense to you guys? Yes. Yeah, that's yes. good information. Now, so we went through at the beginning of your kit, we went through Janet's information, your information. Did you guys have any other people that you wanted to add to your persons to be notified before I save this for you? Well, there's, there's more than enough people there. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this save button here. What this is going to do is compile everything that we just went through into one single document. And then once that's finished downloading or we finish wrap up today, rather, uh, I will be able to send that over to you guys once we finish up. Okay. Yeah. Right. All right. Perfect. Now, let me turn you this obviously know that as a veteran, you're one in good standing, right? As a veteran, what? that you're a veteran in good standing with the VA, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, and because you are, what they did was set up a program for you to allow you to extend your same no-cost benefits that you receive as a veteran out to your family and close relations. Um, so what they did that for uh, you in here, you're able to sponsor, and what most veterans do is sponsor and activate that program for all of the people that they want notified that's gonna be helping them. They can actually sponsor them for the same benefit. So, 
we have in there for you, Sharon and Paul and Kathleen and Gil. Uh, they did it under some rules, guys. First is that they have to be over the age of 21, not currently living in your household. Second, uh, they have to be employed or retired. Third is that they have to have your permission because without your permission, they can't receive uh, the benefits. So what that means is that they're gonna get that family information guide. They'll get their own will kit. They'll get a $2,000 death benefit. Uh, as well as access to your guys' permanent benefits uh, that you guys are, that we're gonna go through here in a second. So I got on there, is there anybody that's on this list that you wouldn't want to activate for their sponsorship? No. No, everybody. Okay, so let's go ahead and activate Sharon. That's your sister, right? Mm hmm And then we activate Paul. And then Kathleen, right? Yes. And then Gil. Yeah. All right. Oh. And then we got Lori. Yeah. And Michelle. Uh, you know what? Maybe Let's not on the yeah. friends, because we don't really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't take wanna, Michelle. Yeah. No, no, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle. All right. I'm not sure. Like, I don't want to. No, Michelle, no. Yeah. But, what about, uh, Rick? But Rick, yeah. yeah. Rick, Rick yeah. is good, sure. Okay. Now, is there anybody that you like more than the other person? Anybody that we should pay <laughs> for to get? The benefits out to them first. Uh, I think immediate family is good. And in a last case scenario, you might do, you know, Rick. You, know, you said Sharon was a Navy, right? She yes. was Navy, yes. Okay. So what does she do? Uh, she's currently, she does medical, uh, she's doing the medical records, the technology part of it. She's a retired Navy yes. nurse, yes. an operating room nurse. Yes. And she yeah, she's still involved in the uh, in the yeah. healthcare industry. Uh, electronic. Paul, Paul's not a Paul's not a veteran, right? I'm sorry. Paul's not a veteran, right? No, he's no, not. No. Okay. All right. So that's pretty good, though. I think we got twelve thousand gifted there in group death benefits. Again, they get the will and all that stuff. Does that all look good to you guys? My brother Gil is a veteran, and obviously Rick, my yeah. Navy shipmate, is a veteran too. And what branch was going? Navy, everybody's Navy. So what they did is wrote this mandatory read-off letter that they have us read to all the members just to kind of back up and fill you in on the program that they designed to fill in the gaps for both you and uh, Janet, Bruce, okay? So it says, Dear Veterans, the insurance programs being offered today are made available on a voluntary basis through the cooperation of Protect My Family, Safe Family Network, and American Income Life Insurance Company, a company that has a long history of serving associations and their families. American Income Life Supplemental Benefits are not in competition with any group benefits through your workplace or employer. They can complement any insurance policies you may already have. If you choose to take advantage of any insurance programs offered through AIL, your benefit program is permanent and it's portable throughout your lifetime. American Income Life currently has over 850,000 veteran organization members covered under A, B, and D policies at no cost, and to date, over 99.8 million life, health, and no-cost AD and D benefits have been paid to veterans, organization members, and their families. There are several benefits available. Please take a few minutes and listen to the AIL representative who's visiting you. They can help you with your needs in this area. Please take advantage today. We would like your feedback, so please take a minute to complete the report form. This information helps, uh, helps serve veterans and their families more effectively. Uh, sincerely, uh, the Safe Life Families team. So what that's all saying, guys, is that after I show you the benefits, explain to you how they work, answer any questions that you guys have about those, if you're able to qualify, uh, if, excuse me, answer any questions that you guys have about those, if you guys are able to qualify, you can take advantage of those today while we're here meeting on Zoom. Um, when I'm finished, I'm going to have you fill out a report form. It's going to go back to the veteran service organizations and the Safe Life Family Network team. That way they know that we met, you got everything explained to you, and I did my job. Does that all sound fair? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, um, you obviously know, like I said, that you're a member in good standing with uh, the VA. Just because you are doesn't mean that you can automatically enroll into them. You do have to qualify. Um, if you're too high of a risk, they can't let you in. So they may ask you just a couple quick preliminary questions just to make sure. 
Now, did either one of you guys, some of these may sound a little funny, uh, have a terminal illness or like Alzheimer's or use oxygen? No. No? What no. about internal cancer in the past two years? No. no. And in the past two years, have you had a heart attack or stroke? No. <laughs> no. no. And you guys use tobacco or marijuana in it? No. 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 Okay. Now, this is an important part. Every single one of the veterans and their families, they're actually all seen separately. Now that's because every veteran, they have a different need, but they also have a different one. You know, it's right for you and your family, won't be right for the veteran that they have me see after you, um, or the one that they have me see uh, down the road. So since every veteran has a different need and a different one, that's why they have a sit down with you on an individual basis. So that being said, as you can see, they have me ask you a few more questions just to ensure the benefits that you're shown actually do fill in a need for both you and your family. Now, first couple's already been filled out here for you, but I'm assuming we got you female, Janet, and we got you male, Bruce. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then you guys are both retired, right? Yes. yes. All right. And then the email address and phone number still look good for you there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. No dependent kids under 19? No. And then you guys said that you had some USAA stuff, right? Yes. Okay. And then uh, how much were you covered for, Bruce? Two years is 250. 250. 250. 250. 250. 250. 250. 250. 250. Yourself, Janet? Mine's the same, 250. 250. Okay. Is that do, you it guys or, do you guys rent or own? Yes. We own. And you guys own, own, or do you guys have a mortgage? We, we have a mortgage. mortgage. Okay. And how much do you have about left? Um, 175? 175. 175. Yeah. And then what do you guys pay about each month? Uh, 20, uh, 2,044. 22, yeah, 2,044. Yeah. 2,044. Right. And then did you guys refi like most of us did? Recently? We did, and we've got a 2.25% refi oh, with new goodness. day USA. Yes. That's pretty awesome, right? And then how many years awesome. got left? Oh, I don't know, 15? Yeah. Oh, I don't even know if it's that long. Is it that long? About that. You just call it 15. 15. Okay. Yes. And I'm going to assume that you guys have that life insurance to pay off your house when something happens to either one of you? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's a good, what a good amount of that is for? Yes. Yes. Okay. I got you. All right. So we'll put it in there for the 170. We also, we also have other funds, but yeah, I don't know if you want to know about the rest. No. <laughs> okay. All right, and then you guys are both uh, retired. And and then yes. what do you guys, uh, let's see on here, um, what are you guys usually bringing home monthly from retirement? Yes. Oh, it's about 9,500. So 16. Between both of you? Yeah. So we'll just go 45 and 65? <laughs> uh, well, it's mostly mine. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's about, about nine thousand a month. About nine thousand a month, Andrew. Yeah. Let's go six and three. Okay, so that's fine. Very good. Very and good. Then what do you guys think about on your expenses? Oh goodness. Four. Yeah, that's good. Four is. All right. Four, and you guys are bank locally for checking and for savings. Uh, checking. 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 Okay. Now uh, the benefits were set up for the membership. I'm going to just get your program going here. Your benefits were set up for the membership on what was called the dollar a day philosophy. The um, reason why they chose just a dollar a day is that it wasn't intended to or supposed to affect the lifestyle of a veteran while they were active or while they were serving. Now, most veterans uh, uh, are in a different situation. Some are single, some are married, some have kids, some are retired. All they have me do is just show you what most veterans do in your situation which is about the $2 a day each. And then we kind of go from there. Does that all sound fair? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you here. You guys let me know when you can see it. All right. You guys see that okay? Yes. All right. Uh, we can... Well, we see, we see your, your picture, not the video. Oh. You guys can't see this. You guys see hospital benefits and freedom of choice? Yes, you yes. can see that. Yes. Oh, okay, perfect. That's where it's um, Now, they were going to be concerned with two major areas for you. Um, the first was going to be your funeral and final expenses. Second was going to be some hospital and accidental injuries. You know, but let me ask you, have either one of you guys ever had to plan or participate in planning or maybe just attend a funeral before? Well, we've attended funerals. 
Yeah, and we have many of them. The reason why they have me ask is that it's actually a really serious problem. Now, the concern for the veteran service organizations isn't the fact that members will pass away. They obviously know that we all will, but when we do, someone in the immediate family, they have to go down and face a funeral director. And funeral directors these days, they require all or even a bulk of the money up front before they start to do anything, you know, or they at least want to know where the money's going to come from, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, so while your family waits for the life insurance that you have to come in, you know, who has to take care of things? The family, right? They got to take it out of savings or they put it on a credit card. Or maybe they call other family members, band together and borrow the money. But like I showed you earlier, what they set up for you, provided you can qualify, is what's called your freedom of choice. And it's this certificate that all your family has to do is take that down to any funeral director in America, Canada, Virgin Islands, and everything is paid for on the spot. Your family never has to bring their checkbook. They never have to put it on a credit card. Just my dad or mom or brother, sister, however you want to look at it, was a veteran and a member of American Income. They had the freedom of choice and everything is paid for and taken care of from that point. Now, Bruce, Janet, what they allocated there for you for that cremation, obviously knowing that uh, the rest of the stuff will be taken care of for you through uh, the VA, uh, they allocated there for both of you guys that $5,000. What's important is that's for any cause of death. It's on or off a job, obviously in your working years through your retirement, that money will be there set aside for the rest of your life to pay for and take care of all of the funeral and the final expenses. Now, when your funeral costs are less than your death benefit, as you mentioned, you said you want to be cremated or you don't have traditional funeral, whatever the case may be, the difference goes to whoever your beneficiary is, meaning whatever is not used simply comes back to your family. Does that all make sense so far? Yes. Yeah. Now, God forbid you're to pass away in any form of an accident, they send an additional 30,000. When it's auto related, they send an additional 60,000. And on a common carrier, that's simply anything you pay a fare to ride, like a bus, a train, a plane, or a ferry. And it carries a regular schedule. They send an additional $90,000, again, on top of paying and taking care of the funeral and the final expenses. Now, Bruce, Janet, let me ask you, if you guys were to qualify, wouldn't it be nice to know that you had that certificate, you had everything taken care of for the rest of your life? Seems rather yeah. convenient. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, what was that? I say yeah, seems right. rather convenient. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the second area that they were concerned with uh, was your hospital and accidental injuries. Now, they weren't too concerned about your medical bills. You know, for the most part, your medical bills get taken care of for your medical insurance, or either one of you guys can go to the VA at any of time, right? Um, what they were concerned about uh, for veterans was just lost income and out-of-pocket expenses. You know, as you get older, sometimes that can end up being a lot of money. So Janet, Bruce, anytime that you have to go to the emergency room, an urgent care, a walk-in clinic, uh, they're actually going to send you $150 just for taking the time to go get that injury looked at. That's whether you scrape your knee, you need stitches, does cover you guys both on or off the job, uh, individually 24 hours a day. Now, there is an exception to that, and that's when you had to stay overnight uh, in the hospital. They set aside $300 a day, and they did that for up to a full year. Now, that ends up being $2,000. $100 at the end of the week. When that money comes in, that doesn't go to any of the doctors or any of the hospitals. That comes directly to you guys there at home. And an extra $2,100 a week, that's obviously going to help out your family, right? Sure. Yes. Yeah, of course it will. Now, the only exception to that is when you have to stay in intensive care, they set aside $600 a day. Now, the reason why that's double the overnight is they do realize when you are in intensive care, it's usually a life or death situation. Now, Janet, Bruce, on the 15th day, every day after that, it goes back to that $300 a day for the rest of the year. Now, there's three protections that they built into your hospital benefits for you overall. First is that they're all per incident and per case, meaning that there's no yearly maximums on how many times you can use the benefits, as well as there's no exclusion periods. Second is that they're 100% tax-free. And third is that they do work in cooperation with Medicare or Medicaid. Those will always pay your medical bills or your child care. This will still always pay you, and you don't ever have to choose between the two. Now, does that second part make sense so far? Well, yeah. there's a lot of good information there, Andrew. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, it sounds like this is the first time that you've heard about these benefits or applied for the burial and will kit provisions. <clears throat> right? I mean, we haven't really well, looked into we get it. little bits and pieces over yeah. the years, but, but this consolidates. Really yeah. So this, this is yeah. nice. This consolidates things rather nicely. Yes. Yeah, well, like I said, it was just my job to explain it to you. If you guys can qualify, I can help you get enrolled. 
although your enrollment started back, Janet, when you did fill out your card, they unfortunately can't go back and cover you guys for things right. that happened before or like give you guys younger rates. Uh, they'd have to start your benefits for you as of today. Uh, the way they set it up for uh, the members was just like a payroll deduction, but they did it once a month through a checking. I was really at the membership's request. Members wanted a benefit that they could increase, decrease, add to, delete from that was under their control. You know, this is kind of one of those things that we all have to face. You know, Janet and Bruce, we're all going to pass away. It's really that part that we don't have a choice in. What they found is that either members take care of something like this now, or an adult child, a brother, sister, a mother, father, someone like that is going to have to take care of it in the future. Does that all make sense? Yes. Yeah. Now, there are some other medical questions I would have to ask just to make sure you guys can qualify, but probably the most important question that they could have me ask you, you know, is God forbid when something happens to the both of you guys together, obviously, Janet, when something happens uh, to you, Bruce would take care of things and vice right. versa. When right. something happens to the both of you, let's say in that bad car wreck, there's going to be a little over, oh my gosh, $130,000 that would come to your family immediately. You know, who would you guys want that money to go to? You probably name the kids, well, right? Yeah, TV so up all for kids. the kids. Yeah. yeah. All kids equally? What's that? Would it be all kids equally? I yes. think so, yeah. Yes. Okay. And you guys are going to fill out that will, right? So, or you can put it as outlined in will. We, we, we need yeah. to get on that. Yeah, they, yeah they, this is a good reminder. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, Janet, Bruce, the next question they have for the members, and it doesn't matter to me which option veterans try to qualify for. My job is actually just to customize the benefits to each veterans and their family's needs. But as I mentioned, you guys can do like what most veterans do. You guys can set aside about the $2 a day each. It's for all the benefits that I reviewed would be here. To be honest with you, sometimes members get pretty excited about one portion of the benefits or the other. They may want to increase their hospital benefits. Janet, you're a little bit younger than Bruce. You may want to increase your freedom of choice amount. That's okay to do too. Uh, sometimes members feel like they want to start with something more basic, knowing that they got their foot in the door and that they can always add on to it in the future. Um, it's usually just a matter of what fits the member's budget. Uh, would you guys want to do like most veterans are doing, just do about the $2 a day each? For what I showed you, you guys feel like you want to do more? Did you want to start with something more basic? Uh, which way do you want to go? Well, that sounds about right. We always have the uh, opportunity to modify that, don't we? Yes. Or is this locking it in? Well, it's both. You can lock this in and you can also add to it in the future. All right, the, the $2, $2 yeah. sounds... Sounds about right then, yeah. All right, well, all I need to do now is just... Oh, all right, there we go. <clears throat> Get that done and dusted and out of the way. All right, everybody. What I want to know is your top takeaways from that particular presentation. Kevin Icar, let's start with you. What is your top takeaway? Oh, you know what? I think I muted everybody because it was... Some people are talking. Okay, now you can unmute yourself. Go ahead, Kevin. <clears throat> Uh, top takeaway was the flow between different parts and how with each part, just make sure that they understand the bits of information, right? So they'll, they'll explain, he was explaining, you know, the first part, whether it be, uh, you know, getting friends and family and veterans and then make sure you understand the purpose of this part and then transitioning smoothly to the next part and uh, the breaking that down and make sure they understand bits and pieces of each information because a lot of information. So just to make sure mm -hmm. that they understand it flows, it flowed smoothly. Okay, uh, Tuesday. What about you? What was your top takeaway from that video? Um, the uh, importance of him explaining the importance of each each section. Um, I especially liked when he explained, you know, why you need to have these six people in case you know someone's not around, and they they were like, okay. oh, that made sense. It was something that they'd never thought about before, and you could tell. So I liked the way he explained the import, the importance of the um, each section. Is there anything that he did that was something that you feel you couldn't do? That I could not do? Yeah. No. No, yeah, it's pretty straightforward, right? I mean, and it turned into a sale. It wasn't difficult conversation. It was pretty straightforward. Mary Soul, <laughs> in my head it will always be Metasol. Mary Soul, what's your top takeaway? Um, that he 
had the patience to answer a lot of questions and he asked them a lot of questions as <clears throat> well to clarify mm -hmm. everything. Okay. He took the time to really just take the time to explain everything that he was doing and why he was doing it. Yeah, so keep in mind that we are insurance agents. We actually were, wear <clears throat> other hats. So we are a fiduciary. We're going to get into what that means. And we're also a field underwriter. But part of what we do is we're kind of the professional. Because before you all start taking your class, which one of you, well, I'll just ask one, uh, Lisa, how cognizant of insurance information were you before you took your licensing course? Um, not at all. Not at all, right? Do you have life insurance on you or your family? Yes, yes, actually doing the course, I learned a, an awful lot that I thought, <laughs> oh, why did my previous insurance agent not explain it the way that it should have been? There you go, right? So we are kind of the insurance consultants for the lack of a better phrase. And the reason for that is that majority of the people you're going to speak to probably have heard about insurance. They have car insurance, they have renters or potential homeowners insurance, but a lot of them don't have life insurance. And even if they do, they don't understand what they purchased. You will find that a very common theme in everything that we do. And so we need to be the ones that are being consultative with our clients and explaining everything and answering questions. Okay, Jessica, it's about 15 minutes past the hour. Here's what I'm thinking. You tell me if this works for you. I'm okay. going to start. I'm sorry. I said, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to start HP Pro, but I'm thinking that I've got to send out some emails to some of these folks who sent me their email saying they're new to the class. So I have to do that. So they have the attachments, or I'm sorry, the uh, access to the course materials. And then I'm going to start HP Pro and I'm going to go for probably a good hour and a half, potentially straight through. So do you think this would be a good time to take a break? I do think it would be a good time. Yes. All right, everybody. So let's come back at, oh gosh, here we go. 30 minutes past the hour, otherwise known as the bottom of the hour. Thank you, everybody. All right, everybody. I am back. So let's get those cameras fired up. We're looking for Audrey, Ashton, Kevin, Ige, Lisa, Taylor, Alexander, Ronald McLeod. Let's go. All right, so we have 22 of you in here. I believe for everybody that is new, I sent you one email, which is the day one email. And I sent you notification from my Google Drive that you have access to the course materials. And so what I want you to do, I may have included one or two people who didn't need it, <clears throat> but for the rest of you, please download those course materials now to your computer. So that way uh, you'll have them and you'll have access to them because at the end of class today, I will remove all of those materials from that uh, Google Drive. Okay, so do I have any questions from anybody? No questions? I love it. I love it when a plan comes together. All right, so here we go. I am going to bring up <clears throat> HP Pro. So if I were you, what I would have open, oh, sorry. Did you have a question? Who was that, Ege? No. That, that was me, actually. I had a question. Uh, this is Jake. Um, Jake, thank I, you. I, I had a question about um, the presentation we just watched. Um, mm -hmm. Is this an appropriate time to, to talk about kind of <clears throat> Um, I guess anything involved. I was kind of, I was, I was curious about the conversation before going into that presentation and um, uh -huh. kind of what kind of teed up and how the couple sitting there somewhat knew what they were going into. I guess I'm curious as to the conversation that took place prior to that meeting. Cause you know, they had somewhat of an idea of what they were going into, but not a ton, so I guess. He, curious as how that gets teed up. Yeah. So it gets teed up because he had a conversation with them on the phone saying, Hey, we're going to schedule you to, uh, enroll you in the benefits <clears throat> or issue the benefits to you because of a uh, request that they had submitted. Okay, Got so it. that's what would roll. And so they would then say, yes, I want to meet on Tuesday at five o'clock, whatever. And then they rolled into Zoom and that's where the presentation started. Got it. Okay, great. And and my other question was, um, 
in going through that process that they went through with with the couple, um, do do we know? Or I mean, I guess I'm, I'm sure the answer is no, obviously. But do, like going into that and getting qualified, like them qualifying for the benefits, when how does that process take place? Like, is there a scenario where they go through that whole Zoom call and then they don't qualify at the end, and then you just kind of yes. waste your time with them? Well, you never waste your time with them because you're getting potential referrals out of them in the beginning of the presentation. So it's never a waste because you are issuing uh, the no cost benefits to them right away. Now, throughout the presentation, we do check in, we ask them about their health, we ask them these questions that would help us determine whether or not they're going to qualify for the permanent benefits. And that is in the script that's in everybody's script, and regardless of what market you're in, as we go through that, we'll discover it together. Thank you. Okay. So what I want everybody to do, so you should have a couple of things open. You should have your new agent packet open and looking at day two, because that's part of HP Pro in there. And you can use that to make notes or however you want to make notes. We're going to go through a lot of material. So I want to make sure that you have access to everything that you need. Now, we're recording this. It's going to be up on uh, YouTube later this evening. But the biggest key here is first, I'm going to walk you through all the different pieces of HB Pro. And then after that, I will show you kind of what Andrew did that we watched in that video. If you, well, all of you should have your own login into HB Pro. Tuesday, do you have a question? Sorry, yes, um, I am completely lost. Uh, I don't know where to find my HB Pro where did you, so do I go to my email or? Well, uh, so who's your upline? Uh, John Curry. John Curry. So in your email, did you ever get an email from John Curry's admin telling you to fill out your profile for Planet Altic? Okay. And that is what I'm having trouble getting onto. For some reason, it said it has been terminated. So I think that's what he's working on trying to figure out okay. how to get back in. Okay. So what I would do is text John Curry and ask him for his login into HP Pro because there's nothing wrong, anybody, for using someone else's login to get into HP Pro. The login you never need to share is for EAP. Okay. We talked about that yesterday and I'll reemphasize that again. But for Tuesday and anybody else that joined today, I guess, Micaiah, if you don't have a login in HP Pro, whoever told you to attend the course, reach out to them and get their login so you can at least follow along. OK. So I'm going to share my screen <clears throat> so we can see where we're starting at. And right here is HP Pro. So this is the point that the login should say hbpro.planetaltig.com. Everybody should be at that screen <clears throat> right there. And I'm just gonna fix my cursor so you guys can see it easily. Okay, there we go. So in this case, you're gonna put your username. And when you put your username, it's gonna be probably your first name, last name with no space, lowercase. And then you're gonna put in your passcode, whatever you use to create your profile on Planet Altig. And once you do that, you would get to this screen right here, which is sort of your <clears throat> HP Pro home. It's kind of your launching pad, for lack of a better phrase. OK, so let me just stop my share for a second. Let's see. Is there anybody <clears throat> that has any problems getting to that screen? Important security message. Your computer has been locked up. Your IP address was used without your knowledge or consent to visit websites that contains identity theft virus. So that's you, Tuesday. <laughs> I don't know what you got going on there, but something's not right. All right. Anybody else? Do you have any issues getting there? Actually, show of hands. How many people are on that page with no problem? Please electronically raise your hand. Ba, 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 ba. What, only half of you? Come on now. Sam, are you talking to us? Because we can't hear you if you are. Keep your hands up if you've got to that page, please. Jessica, you're not able to get to that page? I am working on it. 
Okay, Dale Shelton. Dale. Mm -hmm. I'm working mm -hmm. on it. Okay, Lucas Calderon, you're not able to get to that page? I'm on the page. I just don't have the information. I'm, I'm a day late to the train. I don't know what you mean. You mean the login information? Correct. Okay. Did you ever receive an email advising you to set up your Planet Altig profile? Not to my... Okay. So reach out to your upline right now and ask them for their login so that you can get into it. Okay? Will do. Audrey, Audrey, come on, Audrey. I know you can get into it. What's the problem? Um, she sent me the login stuff and I'm just trying to find it. It's not in an email. So I'm like scrolling through stuff. I know I can get on it, but um, okay. I just got to no find worries. the login. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay. Ige, can you give me the website one more time, please? Yeah, it's hppro.planetalting.com. I'll put it in the chat as well. Ige, are you able to get into it? Just figured it out. I'm in. All right. Marisol. Marisol. Mary Soul. I just figured it out as well. Can you raise your hand then so I know you're in? Ronald oh, McLeod, yes. what's happening? Are you able to get in? Yes. I mean, I'm just looking for the raise hand feature. Okay. Oh, down at the bottom where it says reactions or the top, wherever your menu bar is. And Alexander, I think you're at work, right? Alexander? Okay. Yeah, that's me. I'm just finishing up here right now. I'll be heading over to the computer here in about like 20 ish minutes, give yep, or take. No worries. Able to do okay. that. Perfect. Taylor Norman. Yeah, I was able to get into it uh, this morning before I left for work. Okay, so you're at work. You're unable to do it right now, right? Yeah, yeah, but okay, I'm able no to worries. log into it. Okay, so we're only waiting for Audrey and Lucas. That's pretty good. You guys are beating every other class so far. <laughs> I love it. Lucas, who's your upline? James. James Hodges? Yes. Is he responding to you? Uh, he was earlier, yeah. Has he responded to you yet? No. I mean, I messaged him at 37. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. And we're waiting for Audrey. Audrey's still looking. <laughs> Come on, Audrey. If you're talking to me, I can't hear you. It would be let, like. Let what? me let me ask her again because it's like on here, but it just it just goes to the uh, like that homepage. Hey, Kelly, Lucas, hold on one second, Audrey. Lucas Calderon, okay. can you get your login and passcode to HP Pro so he can do that today because he doesn't have his own yet? Or give him something, anything he needs <clears throat> so he can log in. Thanks, sir. All right, take care. Bye-bye. All right, so he's going to send it to you, Lucas. Just hold tight. And, and Audrey... Do you want I'm me to proceed? I'm gonna ask Nicole because I'm like, that's not that that okay. just takes me to the page. I don't, yeah, I'm not sure what happened. But, All right. Um, so if the worst case, just get it from her, okay? Yes, definitely. Let me get hers. All right, everybody. So I'm gonna go ahead and move forward and then Lucas and Audrey, when you get yours, catch up, okay? Dominic, mm -hmm. you're good, right? Dominic? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay, everyone else can put your hands down. Let's go. Let's rock and roll. Bum, 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 bum. Now, this is the tool that you're going to use 100% of the time, anytime you're talking with your clients in a presentation mode. Regardless of what market you're in, except for the POS market, every other market, you're required to use this tool. If you're going to be in the POS market, it's a little bit of a different animal about what we do, uh, but that will change as well. Just keep in mind, any other market besides POS, you are required to use this tool every time you use a or conduct a presentation with a client. Tuesday, your hand is up. Is that from before or do you have a question? Tuesday, can you hear me? 
Sorry, I was talking to, to John. One more time. Say it one more time. Your hand is up. Do you have a question for me? Oh, no, I was letting you know I was on the page. All right, no worries. Excellent. So over here on the left-hand side, you have plan and profile achievements, dashboard, game plans, presentation history, launch HP Pro, training and management tools. So I'm going to go through the ones that are grayed out because those are not currently available. HP Pro is a tool that we launched a while ago and we constantly update it with additional features and functionality. So what that means is right now, there's four major parts of HP Pro that has yet to be published, so to speak. Those are gonna be achievements. So the, or rather the first one's gonna be achievements. Achievements would be things such as <clears throat> selling $10,000 of ALP in a day, selling $10,000 of ALP in a week, 20,000 in a month, 50,000, 100,000, 150,000, 300,000, because those are numbers that people can obtain. So if you do that, then there will be an achievement page will automatically mark that for you. And anybody in your hierarchy will know that you've achieved that level. So, but right now that's not currently available because it's nice to have, but it's for the future. We're trying to fix some other things first. The next one that's not yet available is presentation history. What this will be is every single time you conduct a presentation and you close it out and you give it a disposition, you will be able to go back in and change the disposition of that particular presentation. And here's why you'd want to do that. Let's say I meet with somebody today and they say, hey, I want to think about it. and I'm not able to overcome the objection. So they say, give me a call in a week. Well, right now, we would close out the presentation and we would say, think about it. We're not able to go back in and change it. In the future, though, we will. So that would mean in a week when I met with those people, I would actually be able to change the original presentation to sale as opposed to think about it. Very useful for us because it helps us track accurate amount of ALP or annualized life premium that we've sold within the tool. Yeah, and we'll see where we do that in the future where it tracks us. Right now, we're not able to do that. We will shortly. We do have a training module down here <clears throat> that once it's released and published, we will be able to give you training videos, training guidelines, and updates to HP Pro when new updates are published. And down at the bottom, we have management tools. That's going to be extraordinarily useful, not for you all right now, but for <clears throat> your leaders they'll be able to drill down in their hierarchy to get information specifically about what's going on in your HP Pro, your game plans, things of that nature. So we'll discover all of that together. Right now, we're not able to do that, but we will hopefully by the end of the year. So if I were to click on Planet Home, the first thing that happens is it opens up a new tab and then it goes to Planet Home. For those of you that were with me yesterday, this is <clears throat> Planet Home when you get here. So this is a default landing page for everybody. Every single day, you should open this up, see if there's any information in here that might be of use to you. There is a lot of information in this, what I'll call an intraweb, huge amount of information. <clears throat> and we're gonna go through pieces of it throughout the course, but in order to get to it, you can just log into planetaltic.com or you can go into HP Pro and click on Planet Home and it will take you here, okay? <coughs> Pardon me. Next thing is profile. If I click on profile and you've logged in, you should have your first and last name. And once you have your agent ID, and that is necessary, an agent ID is when American Income Life issues you an ID that identifies you specifically for who you are. It's usually a five digit code. It's two letters and then three numbers. That will be provided to you, and that's what we use to track all your activity in terms of sales within American Income. That is not something that you create. It's something American Income creates, and it's given to you. Quick note about agent IDs. You'll, re you'll receive your first one shortly once you've signed your contract, your license goes through, and all the rest of it. However, that agent ID changes, and it changes quite frequently, actually, because when you first get it, you're in a hierarchy. So there's you, you have SAs or regional producers, then GAs, MGAs, and so on and so forth above you. Anytime you sell anything, everybody in your hierarchy is affected. 
they either get credit or they get bonuses or something like that. So that being the case, American Income ties everybody else to your agent ID, which means at any point in time, if any status of anybody in your hierarchy changes or your status changes, then the agent ID needs to be updated. So let me give you a perfect example why. When you first come on board, you're an agent. If you were to sign your leadership contract and become what used to be known as a supervising agent, the first tier of leadership, you would get a new agent number. <clears throat> and that is because now you're working under two different contracts, your individual production contract and your leadership contract, you're gonna get paid a lot more money. But in addition to that, when you do that, the people above you will now start getting bonuses predicated not just on your personal production, but also on your SA ship or your leadership role. If somebody above you were to get promoted or moved out or something like that, we would then change your agent number as well. And the reason for that is because we track when something was written until the policy ultimately lapses. So let's say I sell something today as a new agent <clears throat> for her thousand dollars and my renewal amount is five percent so again i have to use my trusty calculator because i don't want to trust myself to know the number so that's 50 bucks right that 50 bucks sounds not like much but let's say i wrote a thousand policies so now a thousand times 50 bucks is fifty thousand dollars right so that matters because people above you are going to get an additional bonus predicated on how much you're making in renewals if I write that for the first five years that I'm working or the first two years in my hierarchy, and then all of a sudden I either get promoted or I move or someone above me moves, everything that was written before that change happened still gets paid out until the policies lapse. So all those people in that chain will still get their bonus pursuant to what it was at the time I wrote the policy. Everybody that is now in my new chain after two years or two months or whatever it is, they are now not going to get the goodness of the policies that I wrote in the first two years. It will then be changed, which means we need to change your agent ID so that everything tracks with the new hierarchy. That's fine for the hierarchy, but what does it mean for you? It means this, <clears throat> you're getting a bonus, you're getting commission predicated on the plan or the contract rather that you were under at the time you wrote a policy. If that changes for any reason, then your amount of money you get paid goes up. So again, the system has to differentiate when that happens. And the way it does it is by changing your agent ID. Does that make sense? Oh, let me rephrase that. Let's ask somebody. Dominic, does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Okay. So username agent is not going to be given by you. It's going to be given by the business or by American Income. Everything that's in bold black, you can change. So your name as it appears here, your license number. So once you are issued a license number, you're going to go in here and you're going to put the number in there. You're going to put the state that you're a resident of, and that's your primary. You can add as many additional states or provinces as you wish. However, the first one the one that's your primary should be your resident state. If I live in California, when I first got my license, then I moved to Texas. At some point, Texas will become my resident state. California will become my non-resident state and I will change Texas to primary, okay? So again, you could add all that in there. In this case, Brenda only has the one. Then you're gonna put the email address in here. Now, theoretically, that email address came across from your Planet Altic profile, but you should always check it to make sure that it is correct. So for all of you that I hopefully convinced yesterday to change your email addresses to a new one, make sure it's been updated here as well as in Planet Altic. Yes, Jessica, what can I do for you? So does that mean each time the number changes that we have to get a new ID? Yeah, but you don't do anything. It's all done by the back office. Okay. You won't even know you have a new ID until you go into eApp and all of a sudden it's there. Gotcha. Okay. Or if you go into HP Pro and you see all of a sudden it's right, you're like, well, what happened? I think I've had my agent ID changed eight times. Okay. Maybe 10 times, something like that. So don't be alarmed if you see a change. It's no reflection upon you. Just know it's going to change whenever you sign a new contract or there's any change in your hierarchy. 
You're going to want to put your uh, phone number in here, your country, your state. The office is automatically included because the system knows what office you're tied to. So in this case, Brenna is tied to the office out of Corona. And the union that she's part of is the Office of Professional Employees Local 277. For those of you in Canada, I believe you've got the UFCW or Unifor. And you'll know which one it is when you sign your contract. And then the English here is in language at the, sorry, the language is in English, it defaults to it. Any changes you make right here, you're going to want to hit the floppy disk, which is a very pervasive icon throughout everything we do in HP Pro. The floppy disk means the information is saved. Okay. Down at the bottom, yeah, the lower left hand corner. Just follow along with this right now. In the lower left hand corner, we have home, we have dashboard, we have game plans, we have presentation history, and we have profile. Right now, we're in the profile. So we're going to hit the back button, which is going to take us to here, and we're going to look at dashboards. This is very important because it gives you an idea, a snapshot at the moment in time of where you're at. So when I click on dashboard, here's what shows up. <clears throat> in the upper left hand corner, we have two pie charts. One shows you the number of presentations and the type. The other one shows you the disposition of those presentations. So over here, if I hold that, she's had 11 presentations that are veteran, two presentations that are credit union. Of those, what is it, 13, <clears throat> here's how they all resolved or the dispositions of each one. Two of them said they couldn't afford it. Well, three of them are actual enrollments. Two of them, they didn't qualify. One just wanted the no-cost benefits and five of them wanted to think about it. So at this moment in time, if someone wants to think about it and you you know, resolve the lead or give it the disposition, you can't go back in and change it. In the future, we'll be able to do that. So if any of these people call back or she talks to them later, they go, yeah, I do want to buy, then that number would decrease by one and the enrollment would increase by one. In the lower left-hand corner, you have the total number of presentations. So we know it's 13. It adds up the total amount of ALP or annualized life premium that was sold amongst the ones that were sold. There were three sales. So if I take 7,085 divided by three, I get the ALP per sale, which is very useful for us to know because the higher your close rate or the higher your ALP per sale, the more money you're making, okay? So does anybody know what the average ALP is in the veteran market for all of AO? Probably not. Choose that. What do you think the number is? Average sale in the veteran market. 2,400? No, but that's good. It's actually about $1,300. So she's beating expectations by almost $1,000, right? Not bad. So the close rate ratio though, is a little bit lower than the average. So right now she's saying three divided by 13 is 2,308. Average close rate for new agents. Ooh, Jessica, what do you think the average close rate is for new agents? Um, probably like two out of like 10. So 20%? Yeah. It's about 35%. So y'all, this is good news for everybody. You should start thinking in your minds. Okay, so I closed 35% of the time and my average ALP should be about 1,500. All right, so if I do the math, 1500 times 0.35 is equal to $525. That means every time I sit with somebody, I'm going to generate $525 of ALP. I'm gonna mu multiply that times 0.5, which is equal to the 262 times 0.75, which is my advance, <clears throat> $197. So that means every single time you sit with a client, you're going to earn 200 bucks. Average time with a client is about one and a half hours, right? So 200 divided by 1.5 is equal to about $133 an hour. Everyone's seen how I'm doing this math and how it's breaking out. So now all of you know you're at least worth $130 an hour, much better than your 40 or 30 or whatever we thought yesterday, right? Dale, are you tracking with me? 
I can't hear you, Dale. Are you there? Anybody? Anybody? Yes. <laughs> All right. This is how we play the game. I ask you, you have to help me out, okay? So in my mind, I just showed you <clears throat> that you're making 133 bucks an hour every time you sit down with a client. Every single time. <clears throat> Not bad. AHP is the annualized health premium per sale. That's significantly lower than ALP, and we get paid the most here. We do get paid a little bit out of here, but the reason we include it is not to make the money. We include it because it gives a lot of value to our clients. So I'll show you what that looks like later. Plus leads. <clears throat> These are going to be referrals or leads that are collected during a presentation. When we collect these leads, it always happens at the beginning of the presentation, and the goal is at least eight per presentation. So she's collected 22 or 1.69. That is probably a bit of a challenge, right? She's only a 25% of goal. Well, actually under 25% of goal. And over here on the right, you have time per presentation. The system will track how long it takes you to give a presentation. She's tracking in about an hour. That's pretty good. An hour per presentation is not bad. You as new agents, you're probably going to do anywhere between an hour and a half to two hours per presentation. Keep in mind throughout this course for the two weeks, I do not care about efficiency. I do not care how fast you go. I don't care how long it takes you. What I care about is effectiveness. Making sure that you did everything right. Efficiency will become better and better as time goes on because you're going to practice it more and more, just like any other task that you do. When it becomes repetitive, you find ways to make it more efficient. Jake, what can I do for you? What are um, average leads per presentation that we're generally looking for when, when we first sit down with, uh, with whomever? New agents <clears throat> typically have a higher uh, leads collected than tenured agents. So you should be looking at eight to 10. And when we go through the script, I'll show you, it is not that hard to get that. You just have to do it. You have to ask for it. But we'll find out when we go through the script tomorrow. Jessica, what can I do for you? Um, is this within a week's time for her or how This much is time? month, month to date. So good segue. Thank you, Jessica. Over here on the right-hand side, we show the month. So in this case, it's the month of May, it started on Monday, and it ends on this Wednesday, it ends tomorrow. <clears throat> so we can see by looking at this, what day she worked. So we can tell O means she was off, F means she's in the field, and V would mean vacation. Okay, <clears throat> so she planned on working 12 days and only doing 13 presentations of this month, which kind of makes sense because May is a good time to take time off and you have Memorial Day and then June you start to ramp up and July we have a push month. Not bad. So we can tell here the ALP remaining is going to subtract what she sold, which in this case was $7,000 from what she said she was going to sell, what her goal was for the month. So we know her goal for the month was what, about 7,600 bucks, give or take? And she's done 7,000, so not bad. Yes, Michelle, what can I do for you? I might jump, be jumping ahead, but are the numbers in the calendar like the number of presentations scheduled for that day? Yeah, you're jumping ahead, but that's fine. I'm gonna show you that in just a couple of minutes, okay? Just hang with me. So up here, we can click on any of the months and go back in time and let's say November of 2022 and see what she did. Well, she only had two presentations that month. So let's just go back to February 2023. What did she do then? Ah, she had 26 presentations. She sold about $19,000 of ALP. She generated 90 plus leads, which is about three and a half per sit. And her time per uh, presentation was about an hour and a half. And she did take some time off, even though she was off these days, she did these presentations. Uh, Dominic, what can I do for you? Dominic, are you there? Yeah, so with the 
a close ratio of 38%. She's walking away with 19,000. Well, what this is saying is she sold $19,000 of ALP for the month. So if we were looking at how much she actually got paid on your comp plan, it would be 19,000 times 0.5 times 0.75, which is equal to about $7,000. Okay. And that, again, that's only with her closing 38% of her yeah. leads. Yeah. She only closed 38% of her leads. She only had 10 sales for the month. That's kind of the minimum expectation. And once you're a full-time agent, 10 is the minimum. People usually go anywhere between 20 and 30. Yeah. Got it. All right. So let's go back to our current month. If I can find it, we are in May. <clears throat> and again, she took a lot of time off here. On the right hand side, you have every presentation that she gave. So she did 20 of 36 are showing the last 20. And you can see if it's in this grade, think about it, think about it, think about it, postpone. That means it never happened. Think, think, postpone, incomplete, incomplete, postpone. And she, there's an enrollment right there with Clarence, somebody. Now, for those of you in Canada, there's something that you must absolutely do. Right here, you have to download this presentation. So I'm going to click on it. And when I download anything here, it automatically gives me these three little balls that spin. Okay. And what that is doing is that is creating a PDF file that will show up on my desktop. And down here at the bottom left hand corner, it should pop up shortly and say, hey, here is your information. So there it is for Stephanie. I'm going to go ahead and open that. And when I open it, it shows me American income, has a picture, tells me when it was done. Presentation type shows me how long it took, shows me what I recommended to the client and the breakout of all the benefits, as we saw in Andrew Haskins video. And then down here, it has the needs analysis survey. So for those of you in Canada, you must download and save this. Who are my Canadian people? Why don't you raise your hand for me? Because you've gone through your provincials. All right, Mohammed and Mary Saul. All right, thank you. So Mohammed, how long do you need to keep this document? Mohammed? Yeah, I'm right here. Um, I should probably keep it for as long as the policy is in place. No. Kevin, how long should you keep this document? Until, until the policy lapse or it's renewed? <laughs> no, you're close. But here, you guys went through your provincials. You, you've obtained your licenses, correct? Your tax authority. So this isn't anything to do with insurance. This has to do with your financials. Your tax authority in Canada requires you to keep this information to justify the money that you got paid for this. Yeah. Yeah. Until taxation year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I believe it's seven years in Canada. You need to keep this because at any yeah. time yeah. they can require that you submit this information to them. Here's the problem. They don't require it of American income. They require it of you as the agent. So you're the one that has to provide the justification for why this was sold and why you got paid what you got paid. Does that make sense? So this so is basically like our, sorry, sorry. So this is like our receipts, right? Well, it's receipts. your, I'm going to call it your justification. You have another thing that's a receipt that will show you how much you got paid. And I forget how it's done in Canada. That's one part. So you can okay. submit for your taxes and do all that. But then at any point in time, your taxing authority can do an audit on you. I, I'm not sure if that's the right terminology, but they can say, okay, Give us all the information for this time period, why you were paid, what you were paid. This is what you need to show them. So for you Canadian agents, this is a requirement. You have to do this every single time you do a presentation is you need to download it and then you need to save it for at least, I believe it's seven years. Okay. Those of you in the U.S., you are not required to do that. However, it is a best practice for you to do it for a variety of reasons, not just for tax reasons, <clears throat> excuse me, but you may want to do it if the client says, oh, I don't want to think about it, et cetera, et cetera. You want to be able to go back and talk to that client later and bring it up and, and say, hey, this is what we talked about. And it has everything in there 
that was talked about from the needs analysis, what was going on to what was recommended to uh, how much the cost was for each one of those things. Yes, Ige, what can I do for you? No, nothing. I was just raising my hand to say I'm in Canada. Okay, you're Canadian. All right, gotcha. Yeah. So for the Canada folks, I've made a commitment to the leadership in Canada that I make very clear to everybody that you need to down this one, download this 100% of the time, okay? Because the worst thing to happen, and it has happened to agents in Canada, is they don't do this. They don't keep the records. And then your tax authority will call up and say, hey, you need to justify this. And if you're unable to provide this information, Mohammed, what does your tax authority do in Canada? I'm not too sure, but I'm guessing it's going to be fraud because I can't. Well, no, not fraud. No, you're not committing fraud here. Uh, you're just going to be taxed at the highest possible rate you could be taxed, yeah. whatever that is. Okay. So you don't want that. You want to have this information available. Okay. So that's the upper left is the pie charts. Quickly tell you what's going on with all the things you've done in the current month or whatever month you choose over here. In this case, I'll choose January. She said, you can see she did 22 presentation, nine sales, $14,000. On the right-hand side is going to be your calendar telling you when you worked, when you were on vacation, when you were off, how many days you thought you were going to work as opposed to what you did work and how much ALP you have remaining if the month is active. So you can see this is January, 2023. There's no ALP remaining. Whereas <clears throat> if we go into May, she does have some ALP remaining because the month still is in force. In the lower right-hand corner, <clears throat> pardon me, you have all the presentations that were given for that time frame, And then in the left-hand side, you have the breakout of the presentations telling you what the kind of the, the stats or the metrics are, the ratios. Down here, you have home, dashboard, game plans, presentation history, profile, training, and achievements. Same things that we saw before. So we're gonna go back. And we're here and now we're going to go into game plans and <clears throat> everybody, I want you to do exactly what I do in this game plan. OK, so I'm going to click on game plans and it's going to come up in this case, it's going to show me all the game plans that I have for this current year. If I want to see a previous year like 2022, I can see that all the game plans in this case, she doesn't have any because she didn't really start them until 2023. So the way that this works is we're going to go into June. You will have a pencil right here in June. I want you to click on the pencil. And when you do, you should come to this screen right here. Everybody with me? Anybody not have the June game plan finances up right here? All right. So the way this works is first thing we have to determine is what your expenses are for the month. Okay. So you can break this down to house payment, utilities, credit cards, lines of credit, loans, food and energy. If you wanted to, you could break it down minutely. However, I don't know about you, but I don't need everybody to know how much money I spend on childcare. <laughs> Let's just suppose I was worried about that. So what I do <clears throat> is I put money up here for my total month. In my head, I think, okay, I need about $5,000 just to pay the bills, keep the lights on, and maybe eat some canned tuna and some crackers. So $5,000 is what I'm going to put up here. The system automatically adds the total income commitment of $5,000. Here, we have two additional things. As you stay with us for a period of time, you're going to want to invest in building your business. And then when you move into leadership, you're going to want to invest in your agency to do recruiting, do things of that nature. Okay, that's just the way that it works. You don't have to do this, but you can. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be just like you. I'm going to say, no, I don't have anything going on there and nothing going on there. So now my income commitment is $5,000. I don't believe you guys will have anything yet in production commitment. Kevin, is that correct? Do you have zero in production commitment? Okay, so I want you to put 5,000 here, 5,000 show up here. Once you do that, I want you to click on this little uh, right arrow and come to the next screen. This is your June game plan. We break it down into two pieces. One is your why, the other one is career goals. So what we use these for is we wanna know why you're trying to go for a particular number in June. 
So let's say the regular month, it's not that big a deal. It's like, hey, I just want to get paid, pay the bills. But there are some people who are like, well, I need to <clears throat> pay for my father uh, to help him retire. I need to pay for some significant bill that's coming in. Or I want to go on vacation to Europe, so I need an additional $10,000. So my why is my vacation that's upcoming. Then we want to know what your career goals are for the month. And what I mean by that would be things like, hey, I want to get promoted. I want to recruit somebody. I want to move from SA to GA. You know, I want to be on the national sales call to get recognition for things that I've done. Those type of things are career goals. Doesn't mean you have to have any in June because you're all brand new, but you never know. Some of you might have a bunch of people you want to recruit. So you want to move up. You want to sign your leadership contract. If that's the case, you would put this in here because one, you held yourself accountable, but two, your leadership will see that and say, okay, what can we do to help you get to where you want to be? Or they level set you and they say, hey, Sam, <clears throat> you know, you just started in May. You're going through the training class to get to the thir third tier of management, which is SA, GA, MJ. To get to an MGA, you're probably not going to do that in your first month. Oh, I didn't understand that it's going to take me a period of time. OK, but what you possibly can do, Sam, is become a supervising agent or what's called a regional producer. I'm like, oh, OK, I can do that. So they would help level set you. OK, so you would fill out your why and your career goals. Now at the bottom, these are the milestones or clubs. 10K in a week, 25K for the month, gold club at $50,000, platinum club at $100,000 or 150, I forget. And then diamond club. <clears throat> Oh, that's what it is. Platinum Club at 100,000, Diamond Club at 150,000. And then we have what's called Double Diamond, which is $300,000 of ALP. So Michelle Spinner, out of curiosity, if somebody wanted to sell $100,000 in a month, how much ALP per deal would they need based on the average deal size? How many deals would they need to close? Uh, Michelle, do you have a calculator? Yes. All right. So there's no shame in it because I'm right there with you. So I'm going to take $100,000 and I'm going to divide it by what did I say? $1,500, right? That means I need roughly 67 deals. Yeah? Yeah. So I'm going to take 67 deals. I'm going to divide it by four to tell me how many deals I need per week. That's 16. Right. Or about 17, 16.75. So that's 17 yeah. deals. I want to work five, five days in a week, which means I need three and a half deals a day. Is that doable? Yeah, because um, one of the calendar days, she did five deals in a day. So there you go. So it's yeah. very doable. So this job has everything to do with how hard or how often you want to work. You know, hey, if you have other jobs, you get paid $40,000 a year to go do something. It doesn't matter how hard you work at your job. As long as you get it done, you're going to get your 40K, right? In this job, if you decide you want to work really hard six, seven days a week, you can make $50,000 in a month that's in your bank account. Can be done. We have people that do it all the time. All right. So you're going to fill this out right here. Then you're going to come down to the, and please, everyone's filling this out, I assume. Work right along with me, right? So let me go back here. This should say $5,000. And then here you should put in your why and your career goals. If you're logging into your own HP Pro, I want you to fill this stuff out, okay? Next one, the lower right-hand corner. Oh, my goodness. All of the Vs, the Os, and the Fs. So we know that there's 30 days in the month of June that's available to us that we can work because there's 30 days in June, right? First on Thursday, 30th on Friday. If we click on the first, you see that there's three options, field day, vacation day, or off. A field day means I'm going to work in the field. I'm going to make phone calls. I'm going to do presentations. It's a regular work day. Vacation day means I'm not in the business whatsoever. I am out of the business. And even if uh, someone had an appointment or something was going down, I'm actually on vacation. I'm away. I'm not, I can't do anything. An off day means you don't plan on doing anything, but you could. So I'll give you a perfect example all the time. An off day for me was yesterday, but I worked. So if I was in the field in production, 
<clears throat> I could say yesterday would be an off day, but if somebody called me and want to do insurance or talk about it, I'm going to take the call. I'm going to make the money. What I'm not going to do is be proactive and probably make my 250 phone calls yesterday. Does that make sense to everybody, the difference? So right now, we can look at uh, Brenna. She has 19 field days out of 30. She's going to take that entire week off. Yeah? She's on vacation Memorial Day weekend. Or actually not Memorial Day because we just, that's over here. Next two days off. Every F is going to be a field day. She's taking the entire week off here in the 23rd week from the 4th to the 9th. And then she's taking every Sunday off. So that means she is working 19 out of 30 days. It's very important to know. If you want, you can put some notes down here why you're taking uh, the week off. Maybe she's like, I'm going to be out of the office. I might be available for something, but I'm going to be traveling, whatever the case may be. Once you have that filled out, and by the way, for all of you, just put in what you think you're going to be doing in June. Forecasted. We know we're going to be in training for a period of time. I would put those as off days. Because you're not going to be selling anything while you're in training. What you need to think to yourself is, when would I be available to actually have appointments? So what I'd like all of you to do is put O's all the way until the 19th. And starting on June 19th, I'd like you to put F's. And if you're going to take that Sunday off or that Saturday, then put those as O's as well. Yes, Michelle, what can I do for you? Do we have to like request the vacation? Yeah. Yeah, you need to call me up and request time off. Okay, Michelle? <laughs> I, I, come, I come from an industry where you have to request all your time off. So I just wanted to be all sure. Right. So I'm kidding. You do not need to. This is not the typical job you've had in the past. You own your own business, right? You work when you want to work. If you don't want to work on Saturday and Sunday, then don't. If you don't want to work next Monday, then don't. Put it in the system and plan for it, though, because it's going to be tough for you to hit your goals if you're not working. But I'll tell you what, if I was younger with my kids and my son broke his arm, I had to use PTO when I left for that particular day. And that was a PTO day that I couldn't take off the rest of the year. Now, in this job, if I got to leave, uh, my son's 30. So I mean, if he breaks his arm, he can handle it. But if that were to be the case and I had to leave, I'm just going to leave. I'm going to tell my upline, hey, I got a dip. I got to go. That's it. There's no, hey, you have to work. There, I mean, let me, let me clarify that. You are not accountable to somebody in terms of how often that you work. Now, your upline is going to want you to work, if that makes sense. If you work for me, I'm like, hey, I, I want to see you on Monday through Saturday, because that's when I work. But I also understand you have a life, you have a family, you have kids, you have other commitments, you may have another job. There may be other things that are going on. I get it. So take that time. You don't have to ask me. Just tell me, hey, I'm not going to be available for this entire week. I'm doing this. Okay, got it. Now I know. And then I adjust our goals accordingly. Does that make sense, Michelle? Yes, thank you. Okay, but in your particular case, if you're taking any time away from the business, I need to see an email in my inbox for me to disapprove, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. So now that we've done that, we filled this out. Everyone should have this filled out. And please, it should be O's all the way until the 19th. And the 19th should be F's. And then pick, you know, Sunday and or Saturday, you're going to take off. All right. Then what you're going to do is down here in the lower right hand corner, you're going to click here and then you get to this screen. Now, a lot of you will have a bunch of zeros up here. That's OK. Don't worry about it. Watch what I'm doing. Back here, we said $5,000, right? So when I come here, whoops, went a little bit too fast. When I come here, this should say $5,000. So your screen should look something like this. Is that correct, uh, Dominic? Does your screen look like that? Dominic? Yes. Okay. So now that we're here, the first thing we're going to do is figure out, okay, what is going on here? These are metrics that I'm going to give you. As time goes on, you'll learn what your metrics are based on your production, the way that you work, all the rest of it. But for now, I want you to put 50 into the contract percentage. The show ratio, I want you to put to 50. So the contract percentage is what you get for working off of your commissions. 
your show ratio is going to be the number of people that you booked for an appointment divided into the number of people that actually show up. So if you book 10 appointments and only five of those appointments show up, your show ratio is 50%. So I want you to put 50%. Your close ratio would be of, you know, the number of people that you presented to, how many of those people actually bought. In this case, I told you your average is 35%. So put 35 in there. Your ALP per sale for a new agent is 1,500. Your bonus percentage, this will fluctuate, but for now, I just want you to put 20% because that's what it will be when you guys first start. And your net to gross, I want you to put at 100%. Net to gross means if I sold $5,000 this week and I sold $5,000 next week, my total amount that I sold was 10,000. My net is also 10,000 because nothing fell off. But if I sold 5,000 this week, next week I sold 5,000. However, somebody called in and canceled the, one of the policies that I did in week one, and the average deal size is 1,500. That means my net for the two weeks is actually 10,000 minus the 1,500 or 8,500, 8,500 divided by 10,000 is equal to 85%. So that would be my net to gross. That's important for us to know because the higher your net to gross is, the more bonus you get paid out. So for now, just everyone put 100%. What then happens is the system tells you automatically, based on how many days you said you were going to be in the field, how many appointments you need per day and how much ALP you need per day to hit your income goal of $5,000. So what this is telling you is if let's look at it from a month perspective, I need to have 37 appointments booked. I need to have 19 of those people show up of those 19. I only need to sell seven of them, which will give me roughly $9,500 in ALP. And the way I get paid is I'll get advanced about $3,000 of it, and my bonus amount will be almost $2,000. So I will get paid $5,000. So remember what I told you in the beginning, if we go back, you don't have to go back, just watch what I'm doing. If I go back here, I said, this is the number that keep my lights on. And so I want to eat tuna and crackers, right? But you know what? Tuna and crackers isn't enough for me, particularly uh, my family. So $5,000 is not going to cut it. So I'm going to say, you know what? I actually need to get paid $15,000. When I put that in there, all of this remains the same. And this gets updated automatically and now tells me I need six appointments per day of which three people show up and I need to sell at least one deal. It says I need two deals a day. So I actually need $1,500 of two deals a day. I will then sell $28,000 in ALP and I'll get paid my $15,000. So I need about 109 appointments. I'm going to do 55 presentations in a month. I'm going to sell 20 of those and I'll make $28,571. But let's say it's me. And my close ratio is 60%. So if I come up here and change that to 60, what happens is I don't need as many appointments. Remember when it was 35, I needed 55 presentations and 20 sales. Now my close rate is up higher I only need 39. The number of sales don't change because that's a factor multiplying the average uh, ALP per sale times the number of sales. So now I only need 39 because I'm closing at a much higher level. For tenured agents, I have people that are closing at 68%. And when I say tenure, people over a year, literally more than half the people they sit with buy something from them. So now I can see what I'm going to get paid. If I go back, now that I've made these changes, 
you can see that my income commitment is 5,000, which means I need 9,500, but my income goal now is 15. So a good leader will look at this with you and say, okay, you're telling me you're committing to getting $5,000. You're gonna sell enough deals to generate 5,000 in ALP, but your goal is 15,000. As a leader, what my responsibility is, is to help you get to that number. You're telling me you're gonna do that anyway. I need to help you bridge the gap between five to 15,000. The other thing that you can do here is you can tell us what do you wanna get better at? And there's all kinds of stuff. Hey, I wanna use HP Pro better. I wanna understand the cancer plans that we have. I need to understand the market I'm working in. I'm not very comfortable in Zoom. I usually solve families, not just individuals. I have a tough time talking to seniors or maybe I want to get leadership development. Tell me what you want to get better at and that will help your leadership craft a plan with you and talk with you and give you an opportunity to get better in those areas by giving you coaching and feedback. So these are the game plans. Now, best practices at the second to third day of the last day of the month, you fill this out for the subsequent month and you then make this available to your upline. So if I were to do that, I can then download it just like we saw before, the little down arrow on the line underneath it, three little balls rotate. And what it's doing is creating a PDF file and then I can open it. And there it is. It tells me here's my expenses. Here's my income commitment. Here's my why, which I didn't fill out. Here's my schedule, which I did fill out. And boom, this tells me what I plan on doing based on these metrics. So again, good leadership would look at this and compare it against what you're doing every single day and help you identify areas of opportunity that we need to get better at. In the future, we'll have management tools that we don't have to print this out and look at it. I can just drill down into my hierarchy and get all that information all the way to the lowest level person. So it's a really effective tool for us to one, learn how everything affects how much I'm getting paid, but two, allows us to set what I think are attainable goals and then figure out how I'm going to get there. Yes, Jake, what can I do for you? Yes. Uh, apologies if, if you literally just mentioned this, but are we expected to send this to our um, upline or do they get a notification when we fill they out? They won't process? get it. They won't get a notification yet because the management function isn't working. But best practices that the managers or the leaders request that all the way up. So think about what's happening. If if you're any of you have worked in sales and, and you've been responsible for quota attainment, you have to give a goal or say, here's what I expect to make, or you're told you're, you need to sell X amount. This tells you how you're going to do it. And then you roll this up to everybody at your level, all the way up to the next level management and then up and up and up. We can then start to predict how much we think that we're going to sell as a team. And if we're below what the goal is of somebody, at, let's say at MGA or an RJ level, they can figure out what they need to do to help people get to the goals that they set. So it's just an effective tool that allows us to step outside kind of a sales funnel and do um, projections based on the revenue that we think we're going to attain. Does that make sense, Jake? Yes, thank you. Okay, so that was the game plans here. I'm hoping that all of you did that in June and just play with it when you get a chance to look at it. We don't expect you to nail it <laughs> the first month, absolutely not. But as you start to move forward and, and stick around and sell, you're going to find that this becomes a very invaluable tool. And then for those of you that will move into leadership, it becomes incredibly powerful because it allows you to see kind of what your team wants to accomplish as opposed to you just waiting until they do accomplish it and then recognize it, right? So if somebody told me, hey, I want to make $20,000 a month, I need to sell $40,000 ALP. If we start the third week of the month and you're at 5,000 ALP, you're probably going to be challenged to hit your goal. So then I should be working on that. What can I do to help you? What are we looking at? Are you working enough? Is your close rate high enough? Are we getting enough referral leads? All types of things that I can do to help you get to that number. Any question about game plans? 
Yes, Mary Soul, what can I do for you? You're getting better every time. <laughs> um, I was wondering if you know, like ahead of time, what your next month is going to look like. Can you fill it out ahead of time, or do you recommend just waiting till the end of the month? Uh, no, I was saying <clears throat> you should fill this out on the third to last day of the month, projecting what the next month looks like. Okay. Sounds okay, good. So this tool is not designed for you to look back. It's designed for you to look forward. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. So let's go back because we no longer need that. So we're here and now we're at HB Pro. So we're going to click on launch HB Pro and that takes us to this screen. This is the screen that all of you should be looking at right before you start your Zoom presentation with your client. Okay. So I want everybody to do exactly what I do here. I want you, well, first of all, let me talk about these buttons on the left-hand side. You have the dashboard, which we already talked about. You have pre-plan, which is a way for us to do some of the work uh, without having to go into a presentation. So we'll talk about that later. We have the rate book. If I click on the rate book, every rate for everything that we sell is available in here. So let's take somebody who is 28 years old, they are a female, they are a tobacco user, they don't have any children on the age of 19, and they live in Colorado. I want to sell them one of these products, either a whole life product, of which there's four different kinds, uh, paid up to 65 product, a four year renewable convertible, 10 year, 20 year level term, any of these products in here. And we're going to go through all of these later, not today. But if I want to pick the basic one, which is whole life, and I say, hey, I want to give a $15,000 in coverage, that's going to cost her $21.78. Right off the bat, I can use a rate book and without having to do a presentation or anything like that, and I know how much it's going to cost me. So for you, uh, I keep asking Michelle Spinner, but that's not fair because I should ask other people. Billy Elliott, how much would it cost for you to get a policy at whole life? I want you to tell me what the MBD or the monthly bank draft would be if i put in my own stuff yeah we don't need to see your stuff just put okay. it in there and tell Let's us how much it. the rate would be um, whole life at fi just fifteen thousand. yes fifteen thousand. Thirty one dollars and 69 cents thirty one dollars and 69 cents so obviously your age is different yeah i would assume okay so the things that affect rates are going to be your health and habits and your age. Okay, the older you get, the more expensive it is simply because there's less time theoretically for you to make the payments before your anticipated death. So in my example here, it cost this lady $21.78. If we take the tobacco user designation off of her, we'll see that the monthly bank draft goes down by $5 or almost $5 a month, $4 and some change, right? So the tobacco user is one of the most expensive things that causes rates to move up. Now, if we did this for her and we turned around and said, well, we're gonna do it again. The difference over here is that we're going to add another type of policy. We're gonna give her a accidental death benefit of $200,000. So you can see that in this case, I could offer this woman $215,000 in coverage, and it would cost roughly $34. So why in the world is 200,000 at 16, which is less than 15,000 at 17? That's because this is a non-guaranteed product, and this one is guaranteed to pay out no matter how or when she dies. So tomorrow we'll go through the policy designations so that we understand that. But you can play with the rate book. Any scenario, any situation, you can put in here. If we sell the product, you can quote it. Next thing to the rate book is the sponsorship program. It looks like that. Maybe you remember this from the video with Andrew Haskins. Well, there was a bunch of people in here. And every time you add somebody in here, the total gifting goes up by $2,000. So we're going to actually go through this later, not today. But 
here's the beauty. If you have people that you want to sell to, that you know, friends, family, I don't care, anybody you want to sell to, you want to get their information into your lead pack, this is how you do it. You can put your name as the uh, sponsoring person, put your phone number, email address, and then just add their names down here and all the information relative to that. Once you do that and put all that information in there and you click this floppy disk, it will automatically save to your lead pack if you've logged into HP Pro with your own login. If you use someone else's login, it would just be added to their lead pack. Sam, does that make sense to you? Yeah, I guess. I, I was just trying to get to the to where you was there. Okay, are you on my screen? Yeah. Okay. So it's I very build, small for me. So <laughs> you can make the uh, eight. Sorry, you can make Zoom bigger on your computer. To yeah, make the but I was I, trying I to. Not. Okay, so I can't make my screen bigger, but you can make it bigger on your Zoom. Okay. So the next one to the sponsor program is materials. When I click on that, and we'll go through all this, every no cost material is on the left hand side. Okay. Next to that, you have underwriting manuals of which you are all going to be very familiar with because you function as a field underwriter. So we're going to go through all of that later. And then last but not least, you have medical questions, depending upon if they're a senior or if they're under the age of 60. A senior in the insurance business is considered anybody 60 or older. So those are the buttons or the icons rather down here on the left hand side. Now let's go ahead and follow exactly what I'm doing. I want you to type in the word other. When you type in the word other, I just want you to wait for a second. Don't hit enter until the word other is in the drop down list. The reason for that is because if I typed any name in here, let's say I type John, every single lead that Brenna has in her lead pack will show up if John is anywhere in the name. None of you have lead packs yet, or if you're logged into somebody else, you might have a lead, but it's not yours, it's whoever you're logged in under. So we don't wanna to touch any of these leads by mistake. So we're gonna type in the word other, and when we do, we'll wait, the other will drop down, we will select other. And when we do that, then this screen populates. Uh, yes, Jake, what can I do for you? For the sponsorship program, like, you know, we were talking a lot about the veteran market. Let's say my sister just wants a whole life policy. I'm able mm -hmm. to just put her information in and, and get her yes. like, and generate a lead. And it's, it's not, it's so anybody that I'm in contact with in my own network that's looking for insurance, I can just generate yes. some leads that way. Yes. Or right. just put Thank yourself you. as the sponsor person. So, so as long as anybody generally qualifies, I mean, you're, you're kind of. No, this has nothing to do with whether they qualify or not. You're asking me, can you put a lead into your lead pack? This is how you do it. Okay. Okay. We'll talk about qualification later tomorrow. Dominic, what can I do for you? What was that dollar amount that showed when you generated a lead? What was that for? It's a $2,000 because every single person who's sponsored receives a $2,000 accidental death and dismemberment certificate. Got it. Okay. So we're on this page here. We typed in other. It comes up with language, state, presentation type, subtype, SG number, and group name. So what I want you all to do is select the state of California. The presentation type I want you to select currently is veteran, regardless of what market you're in. We're just going to follow the veteran one as the example. The subtype is going to be a return card. And the SG number I want you to type in is SGMAD. Once you've typed in SGMAD, you wait for a second, it'll show in the drop down. You will then click on it and it will automatically populate the group name with VFW Department of California. Is there anybody who does not have their screen looking the same way as mine? If you are, raise your hand so we can get it solved right now. <laughs> Everybody has it the same way, right? Is that what you're all telling me? I don't think so. I don't think that that's possible. 
I've never had a class where it's all done that. Okay, so here we go because I like to do checks. Robert Foley, share your screen with us and let's take a look at what you have displayed. Robert, you know, are you not in, right? I'm sorry. I said, you know, that I didn't get the access, right? So that's why I'm writing everything down. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, if oh, okay. you're following you and you can't get in, okay. then you say, hey, I haven't been able to log in. Okay. Robert, are you, are, Robert, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Robert, did we lose Robert? Okay, so maybe Robert can't do it. Audrey, guess what? I'd like you to share your screen with us. I just got on, so I've been following everything, but I didn't have the login stuff. So, I so you're logged in now, now, right? I okay, am on ahead. now, but I haven't I haven't put okay. input go, anything yet. Go ahead and share your screen so we can walk it through together. Okay, hang on. Mm -hmm. Hey, Robert, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? I. I Robert, can you, okay, so you can hear me. We can't hear you even though you're unmuted. All right, so as long as you're following along. Audrey, we're just waiting for you to share your screen. Okay, I'm Audrey. Back in. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can okay. hear you now. So I, I had to log back in. Where do, yeah. where do I go? go to get back share to your screen so i can see exactly okay. where you're at and then i can tell you got it uh, where's that? Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. oh that's weird okay it bum, was bum, great. Bum, let me try it again it was grayed out on the share my screen okay Try to make that bigger. Mm -hmm. oh, here we go. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is Planet Altic. This isn't. This is not HP Pro. Can you bring up? Oh, HP I thought you were talking Pro? about this one. Okay. Then I. Okay. Just change the change. To... <laughs> no, no. Do me a favor. On the very top in your address bar, just type in HP Pro. One word, mm -hmm. dot planet altig. If it makes it easier, there's planet actually HP Pro on the left. Altig.com. Mm. Okay. Well, Altig only has one L. Oh, yes. Yeah, so go back. That's Sorry. right. Go back. Let's follow her advice. I don't know who that was. And just on the left hand side, you mm -hmm. see where it says HP Pro, like the handshake icon down mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. Click on okay. That. Awesome. Look at that. Now I want you to go ahead and use the login that you use for Planet Altig. Just log in right here. Okay. Go ahead and launch HP Pro. Okay. And now I want you to type in the word other into client name. Um. It's on the right hand side. Oh shoot! I don't, I don't see it since I'm. Oh wait, I think the um the Zoom was covering it. Okay, <laughs> okay. So I'm Type here. In the word other. Type in the word other. Uh huh. Wait a second. Now select other. Okay. Now I want you to select the state as California. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Presentation type is veteran. Mm -hmm. Subtype is return card. Okay. And the SG number is SGMAD. Okay. Go ahead and select it there. Now you're at the same screen. That is yeah. awesome. You can stop sharing now. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Is there anybody? Actually, let's try this differently. By show of hands, 
Who is on the same screen that I am on? And the reason everybody's saying, no, I take the time to go through this is because it's been my experience. If I don't get you started off right, it goes worse. It goes <laughs> really fast. So I want to make sure we're in the same spot. So I, I know Dale and Tuesday are not able to do it. So that leaves us with Lucas. Lucas, are you able to log in? No, I'm still waiting for James's credentials. Okay. So that leaves us, Audrey did it. So Lisa, Lisa, can you change your screen name to your last name as well, Lisa, and then whatever? Lisa, you don't have your hand up and neither do you, Alexander, or Taylor. Does that mean the three, well, Taylor's working, right? Lisa and Alexander, are you able to get to the screen that I have up? Yeah, no problem on my end. I was able to do it from my computer. Okay, perfect, thank you. So that leaves you, Lisa, what is going on? Lisa, are you there? I'm here. It's just everything is running so slow. So I've got everything except for that last little box, the group name. So if you see right here, you type in SGMAD and wait yeah. for it, just like you did with other, then click on it. It will then say VFW, Department of California, okay? Okay. All right, everybody, you can put your hands down. So now this is what happens right before you have a presentation. So you've got yourself set up. Everything is ready to go. And you're just waiting for your client to jump on Zoom. When your client jumps on Zoom, then you're going to click on Start Presentation. When you click on Start Presentation, this is the screen that you get. On the left-hand side will be everything that you will typically show to your client. It doesn't matter what market you're in. If you're in the credit union market, then it will show you the things that you have to display for credit union. If you're in the McGruff or the no cost legal will kit, same concept. In this case, because we're using the veteran market, it shows up with the LWTPS, the group AD and D, the family information guide, the last will and testament and three important facts. Ashton, your hand is up. Do you have a question for me? No, I forgot to put that down after saying raise your hand if you're if okay. you got it. No so down here at the bottom, you have home, which will take us back to where we were before. You have needs analysis, sponsorship program, materials, report card, and finished presentation. So we're going to come back to these in just a second. If you remember, I wanted you to open your scripts for the veteran script. Actually, I don't know if you remember that. Did I say to do that? Did I say to have your veteran script open? Anybody? No. Okay. I, didn't oh, I, said to have your, I said to have your new agent packet open, right? So let's go to the veteran script. It is attachment number four, and it will look like this. Okay. You have your opening, your copy of the letter, et cetera, et cetera. So here's what happens and what Andrew kind of did, and remember that's two years old, so we've moved a little bit beyond that. I need to update that. I'm building a new video, hopefully this weekend. So I'm going to move this to the side and say, okay, we have our opening, and then show a copy of the letter. The first thing right here is this letter. You see it? So what I'm going to do is share my screen with you. Let me know when you can see it. This is a copy of the letter that you received. So theoretically, I display that letter. And because I selected SGMA, new computer. I'm so sorry. Who was that? Do you have a question? Okay. So your letter is going to be displayed right here. Obviously, it's going to be a little small. You can see my cursor has a little plus symbol on it. Or I can come up here and I can make that bigger if I so choose. So here is the letter. In the script, what we say is, hey, this copy of the letter you received, the Veterans Service Organization got together and noticed there were some common concerns shared by all veterans. Every script kind of runs the same if you're going to show a letter. And it gives you information that you're going to read in this case. So my job is simple. Number one, we're going to do this. Number two, we're going to do that. And the third, they want us to go over your VA burial benefits. 
In this particular script, we say at the end, there is a report form that goes to the VSOs, which stands for Veteran Service Organizations. So they know I went over everything and got you enrolled today. So notice that in this script, we don't read this letter. We read that's in the script. So once I show this, I'm completely done. You notice there's four pages. When we do this letter, regardless of what market we're in, we're only showing the first page. For most markets, there's at least a second page, which we will show later. There is a, one or two markets where there's always only going to be one page. That's perfectly fine. Don't worry about it. So now that I have finished that, I'm going to scroll down here and it says all of this stuff. Do you know why the VSOs want to ensure you enroll today? And then I give the reasons. Just sit back and relax and stop if you have any questions. I think what Andrew said, sit back and enjoy the show, right? So once I've done that, now I go into A3, which is the last will and testament preparation survey, LWTPS. So let's start with a quick survey. Can you see it on the screen? So what I'm going to do, once I'm done, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on that X. That's going to close whatever I was displaying. And now I'm going to display the LWTPS. And when I do that, this comes up in the last will and testament preparation survey for veterans. And we're going to fill this out in the veteran market. Now, in other markets, we have other surveys that get filled out. I'm just showing you this from a mechanical standpoint. How do I get things to show up on the screen? So in this scenario, if I didn't want to fill this out, I can hit X. However, if you're in the veteran market, you are required to get that thing filled out. So you're going to display it and then you're going to change the information. So you're going to change household type, branch, status, membership in a VSO. If you are, which one are you a member of? Did you get an honorable discharge? Uh, have you been in a hostile environment? Do you uh, authorize a campaign medal or combat pay of some type? You're going to give me the war service or what country you're in when you're fighting a war. Your rate or rank at discharge. If you have any current insurance through the VA, whether it's Veterans Group Life Insurance or Veteran Affairs Life Insurance, and we're going to get the name first and last. If the lead was actually a lead from your lead pack, then this would already be filled in for you. You just have to fill in the additional information. If they have adult children, you click on this, you'd add all the adult children. If they're dependent, you would click on this and add the dependent children. Because we're going to be selling life insurance, so it's very important for us to understand what their family looks like in terms of the number of people and the ages. Then we're going to want to know their employment, <clears throat> their occupation and duties for that employment, and how much money do they make. Then down here, we're going to have insurance. So we can click anywhere in here, and this screen will come up. First, we talk about insurance through work. We fill all that out. Then we talk about insurance outside of work, fill all that, and then click Save. If they rent or own their home, we're gonna click anywhere here and we'll do this. If they rent, we don't have to fill anything out here. But if they own, then we do have to fill out the monthly payment, the mortgage balance, the rate the years left. And then we're gonna click save. Then down at the bottom, you have funeral instructions, both uh, primary in terms of funeral instructions for the first person or the veteran in this case, and then cemetery instructions. Where do they wanna be buried? So this is what do we want done with the body? Where do we want the body stored for both the primary and the spouse? When that is done, you're going to, uh, well, actually, I forgot about banking over here. If they have a checking account, you click on that and then you tell us how many they have. Same thing with savings or investment accounts. If they have no bank accounts, just click that. And do they bank locally for checking or savings? Once you have all of that filled out, you're going to be able to click complete if you're missing something, like in this case, we're missing all this information, it will highlight in a red or yellow border, letting us know that we need to go back in and do something about it. We need to fill it in, okay, everywhere, because I didn't fill any of this in. Once that is completely done, I can then hit complete, which would take me to the next part. If you're in the credit union market or some other market that has a survey, the concept is exactly the same. You're going to fill all this out. So let me do this real quickly uh, for us. 
Household is going to be Mary. Branch service is going to be Army. Current is an honorable discharge. Uh, discharge. They're not a member of a VSO. They did have honorable service. They weren't in a war, so that's not applicable. Their rate was Airman Basic, and they have no coverage for insurance. In this case, it's going to be John Jones, and he John Jones, and I'm going to say he was born 0101 1990. He is a male. He has no children. And the spouse's name is Mary Jones. And oh, I want to keep doing that. Jones. I'm going to say she was born 0101 of 1991. She's a female, no children. His employment is full time. He is in sales and his annual income is about $65,000. Her employment, again, is full time as well, but she's going to be an engineer. So she makes a little bit more money in the family. I'm going to say $150,000 is what she gets paid. Click on insurance through work. Even though they don't have any, you still need to enter zeros. So we're going to put zeros for everything. If you ask them what insurance they have, they will tell you. You're putting this in for your benefit, actually. You're trying to understand what their portfolio looks like when it comes to insurance. You notice we're not asking them to buy anything yet. We're not presenting any plans. We're just asking, hey, the VSOs want to know, do you have any insurance? Once you have that all filled out, in this case, it's going to be zeros. You're going to click on save. Come down here. Do they have any property? Well, they're renting and I'm going to change this to renting. I'm going to click save. Ooh, so I'm going to say 1500 is what they're paying here for rent. Boom. Mortgage balance is zero, zero, zero. Okay are gone. Do you bank locally for checking and savings? Yes, I do. I want to be buried in a state cemetery, but my wife wants to be cremated also in a state cemetery. So now I think I'm done. So let's say, can I click on complete? When I click on complete, if I get this view recommendation, save and exit, that means I've successfully filled this form out. If I don't get that, then I know I need to go back and figure out someplace where I'm missing some information. But in this case, it worked. What I do not want you to do is click on view recommendations, okay? Because if you were to click on that, this is what happens. It does a little thing here and it comes and it says, hey, we're gonna issue you these things. And then you have this that says 10 times annual income and life insurance minus $2.1 million. Lucas, when you see that, what do you think if you were a client? That I'm gonna owe that a lot of money. That you're going to owe who a lot of money? The insurance agent that I'm speaking to. Well, well, you don't owe anybody any money, but you, you, so you're confused, right? For the lack of a better phrase, not that you're confused, but it's not making sense what it's telling you. Is that correct? I think I had a, a little role play I, when you said you. I thought you were speaking to me as if I was individual getting the pitch for insurance. Okay, so let's role play. I'm gonna say, hey, it looks like that they're recommending that you need 10 times your annual income and life insurance, roughly based on how much both you and your wife make up here, which is a little over 210,000, or you need a 10 times, which is about $2.1 million. You don't have any insurance that's recommending you to get that amount. How do you right, feel and about and that? And that's what I'm saying. I I wouldn't be able to pay you $2.1 million. Right, but immediately you're thinking that now I'm trying to sell you something, right? Right. So I don't want anybody to click on recommendations because the whole point of the way that we do this uh, script is to not look like we're selling anything until we get to the end when we talk about recommendations. If I gave this here without any context whatsoever, it's confusing. Is this saying that, I need to sell you $2.1 million? Is it saying you need that much money? It's very confusing. And you kind of have an idea what's going on. Imagine a client who has no idea and you put this in front of them. So I do not want you to click on view recommendations. What I want you to do is click on save and exit. And when you do that, the survey has now been saved. Okay. So if I look at the script right here, I have now gone through the, see where it says, do not show recommendations. I said, great, this will make completing your will quick and easy. And now I want you to complete, click the complete button, which we did. And now we're gonna show the AD&D certificate. So now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click on this. 
which is going to show me the certificate. If this was a lead, it would tell me exactly how much the benefit is. And I can just read it, right? Because in the script, I say, now this is your 4,000, 2,000, 5,000, 1,000 accidental death and sperm certificate. It's non-contributory, non-participating, which means that it's already been taken care of for you. So that number is going to come from right here, because when you have an actual lead, it'll list what the value is. And then I tell you, if it's a return card, you listed Jill as your beneficiary, because right here, I know you can't really see it, but this is the actual digital copy of the return card that was filled out by hand by either the client or their spouse and sent to us. So it's going to have the name, the address, the zip code. It will have their date of birth, the phone number, who the beneficiary is and what the relationship of is from the beneficiary to the person who's getting the certificate. So in the script, I say, boom, right here. When you get the email, there's nothing you need to do. It's already in effect. Just print it and store it. Make sure your family. If it's a Pavit, which is a different type of lead, you're going to show a $2,000 gift certificate. So I'll come to that later. Then you move to A5, which is the family information guide. So now we've, we're done with this. If I want to send it to the client, I, and I do in the veteran market, I'm going to click that little arrow right there, which is going to download the PDF file and show me that PDF file. And I'm going to email this to the client. In the veteran market, that's one of three things that I always will email to a client, whether they buy anything or not. So once I have that done, I'm going to look at HP Pro here. I'm going to close this window by clicking this X. And now I'm back here. And now I'm going to do the family information guide. So again, that's going to be right here at A5. So I'm going to open that up. And when I open it up, it looks like this. So there's the first page of eight pages. I'm going to turn the page. It's going to talk about the text I use here. And I say this first section is all the updated contact information, key websites and phone numbers for quick access that they want you to have. Anything in red applies to your VA benefits and life insurance. Then it says turn the page. So I'm going to turn the page. And now I'm going to say this is important for you to fill out. Now, everywhere there's a pencil means I need to fill that information out. In this particular case, if I hit this pencil, everything in gray is what I can fill out. So the place of birth, I can fill out. I can say, hey, it's going to be San Jose, California. I'm going to fix the name there because I don't like how that looks. It should look like that. Contact information. I'm going to put a fake email address in. So I'm going to say john at gmail.com. Phone number, I'm going to just put all five. So it's in there. City is going to be San Jose. State is California, zip code 95136. Once each one of these sections are completely filled in, by the way, you either confirm the information or enter it. If it's blank, you want to enter information in. If it has something that was ported over from the survey, you just want to confirm with the client that the information is correct. Once that's completely done for each section, you're going to hit the floppy disk. And when you do, it says the data has been saved successfully. That's incredibly important because if you don't do that and something happens, let's say your HP Pro gets interrupted, your internet access gets interrupted, you will lose all of this information. That's not good. And I'll show you why in just a moment. So we filled this one out. Now we're going to go to spouse vital statistics. I'm going to click on that. The only thing I need to add, because I already have the birthday and the name, is the place of birth. She was born in Concord, California. I'm going to hit the floppy disk saying that I'm saving it. And now I come over here to the veteran information. So the first part of this is saying, OK, what is your information about you, the veteran? So you can see in the script, I did the vital statistics right there. I did the spouse vital statistics here. Now I'm on the veterans information, which I'm going to do right here. So again, I'm going to click on this pencil. Anything that I need to change, I do. If they say it's totally fine, I just hit the floppy disk to save it. Now I'm on to the veterans to be notified. Notice there's four of them. So when I click on this pencil, all four has information that's in gray that I can update. Yes, Muhammad, what can I do for you? 
I just had a question. If there is something that we need to change here, do we need to change it in the survey too? Or, or is no, that just, just here? change it right here? All right. Just change it right here. You do not need to go back to the survey and make any changes once the survey is done. Okay. So let me just get through this lat this page right here, and then we'll take a break. So now I'm going to fill out the veterans to be notified. Notice over here, I use this text. Hey, so the veteran service groups have found it can be difficult for civilians to work with the VA. That is why they recommend listing veterans that the family can count on to help during that time. Who is the first veteran that comes to mind? Who is next? Who is next? Who is next? There's four here. So I want to know the veterans that the person I'm talking to wants the family to count on during the most difficult time of their life. Because if I'm a veteran, I, my family probably has to work with the VA. Other veterans will know how to work with the VA better than my family, typically. Does that make sense to everybody? So what that means then is I need to fill in all this information here by going, okay, who's next, who's next? You can actually list more if you go, if you can see right here, I can hit that plus symbol. Right now I have four showing, I can hit plus, I can keep hitting plus forever. I can keep filling out as many service members as they're willing to give me. So I'm only gonna do one, we're gonna say it's James Smith. Obviously he's a friend because we were in the service together. He's not married. The branch I was in was Army. If I can type, there it is, I was in the Army. Phone number, remarkably, his phone number is the same as the clients, and he is in uh, Nashua, New Hampshire, and I have no idea the zip code there, so 021 Now I'm good to go, and I'm looking at my text, and I'm saying, is there anybody else? No. Okay. I'll say, hey, thank you very much. I'm going to hit the floppy disk to save it. And I'm going to take the same concept for persons to be notified, but I'm going to use this text here. So I have family and emergency contacts. Again, family has four, emergency contacts have five. If I have more in the family, by clicking on that floppy, I'm sorry, on the pencil, I can add as many as they want to give me. So we want you to get four and we want you to get five. Once I have all of that filled out, I'll just add one in here for main contact. Oh, by the way, if they're married, you don't want to put their spouse again here because you already have it. If you remember going back, we have it. Oops, went too far. We have it right here. Mary Jones. So I don't need to put her in again. What I need to do is say, hey, God forbid, if anything happens, John, to both you and Mary, like a car accident, who do you want to be notified initially? Oh, you know, I want my son, uh, Taylor. Okay, so we do Taylor Jones. He is the son, no significant other. And remarkably, he has the same phone number. And he is in San Jose, California, 95136. Okay, now let's just say that uh, they gave us a whole bunch, but I'm not going to fill it out. So in the script, we start with family, then we go to emergency contacts, and then we turn the page. And then we talk about, well, I'm sorry, once you have, all that is done, however it's filled out, you're going to hit the floppy disk. Okay. Then we're going to go and talk about the text about financial institutions, last will and testament, any insurance policies that they currently have. And then we're going to go to the next page, which is digital accounts, and then their funeral instructions. We're going to click on that. We're going to say, hey, how do you want to be buried? Notice it says burial because that's what I said about him when I filled out the survey. So it took that information and imported it all the way across. So now I'm here and I'm here, verify the information. Then it says display FOC. All of you have to do this and whatever script you're using, you gotta display the FOC. So when you're done with this, you're gonna save the floppy disk and right here on the left-hand side where it says in the event of death, right there, it's really tough to see, but it's an icon with the letter FOC on it. When I click on that, lo and behold, the Freedom of Choice certificate is now displayed. And it says it's the funeral benefit plan, choice of funeral home. And it will have your name right here. So for everybody, when you click on that, I want you to scroll down so that your name is there. Clients respond when they see your name as the person who put their signature on this certificate. And then according to the script, 
we walk through all of this. We say the VSO set up the freedom of choice. You can leave the legacy behind for your family instead of liability, all the rest of that. And then we say, hey, does that make sense so far? Typically, they'll ask questions or they'll say, yes, that makes sense. Then what you must do is you must click anywhere besides the certificate to close it. Now we're done with the family information guide, but we have to download it because it's one of three documents that we're required to send to the client. So I'm going to hit the down arrow. Three little balls are going to spin. And what it's doing is it's taking all the information that I inputted and putting it into a PDF file. You're going to save this somewhere on your computer. <clears throat> I recommend that you save it with the date and you save it with the name of the people that you met with because you might need this in the future. You definitely need to send it to the client, but you may need it for yourself and I'll explain why tomorrow. So we're here, I wanna open it because I wanna see if in fact, did this actually take all the information that I put in? Let's see, scroll down, there's John Jones, there's the birthday, there's Mary, <clears throat> there's the veteran status, there's a veteran that I said to be notified, and there's Taylor Jones to be notified. So now you have downloaded the certificate and you've downloaded the family information guide, and then you would close this. So in the script, we are, where are we? Did I close that? I closed it. Oh, no, right there. So in the script, we're here, and in the veteran script, we're now gone through all of this, and now we're going to be at the A6, Last Will and Testament. So everybody, now that we've gone through that part, let's take a break and everybody come back at the bottom of the hour, otherwise known as 30 minutes past the hour. Thanks a lot, everybody. All right, everybody, I am back. Let's get those cameras back on and let's re-engage. Billy Elliott, are you following along with me? Do you feel comfortable so far with where we're at? Um, I do. It is a lot of information to take in. I'm glad I actually printed off everything you sent. <laughs> mm -hmm. Seems easier to follow. This, is, <clears throat> this isn't even the fire hose yet. <laughs> this is just the We'll get there. It's fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's see. Audrey Toponce, are you there? Dale Shelton, Mary Soul, Kaiser, Alexander. Michelle, are you trying to hide from me? What, what are you doing there? <laughs> I would never. This is never a good sign, everybody, when your students are like this. Oh, my God. This is too much. Never. <laughs> We'll, we'll attempt to persevere. All right, I'm going to share my screen. We're going to get back into this. Here we go. So we know with the script, we're here at the last will and testament. So if we come back over here, we now can close this because we don't need this anymore. We click on last will and testament, and then we go through what the script tells us to do. We're going to check this if it's already filled out. So we're going to confirm it. Everything looks good. Oh, I need to add a surname because his last name. Interesting. Then about your spouse, so I can save that once I'm good. Whatever information about my spouse I want to put in here, I can. And if I want to add any information about my children, let's say when I did the survey, they said they didn't have any children. They're like, oh, well, yeah, we do. Oh, okay, let's put this in here because this is about what your last will and testament kit. So you're going to keep going through this, read the text that's in your script, and then you're going to end up here. We talk about you can go to americawills.com forward slash will kit. If you're in Canada, it would be Canadian wills or canadawills.com. And then you're going to put in the promo code that shows up over there. Then you're going to uh, download this one as well. Once you download it and save it, then you're going to click X. And now you're going to come to the three important facts. This is only two pages, very straightforward. And if we come to the script, you'll see it talks about three important facts right here. So display the three important facts, read this text, and then you're going to go number one, number two, the easiest way to look at it. Then you're going to say number three, and then what you're taught to receive is 893 for a plot. So I'm not going to read all the text. You're going to do that as you practice this, but basically you're reading all the information to them here. And then you're asking them, do you have any questions right here about these burial benefits? 
They say, no, I got that. You're like, okay, perfect. So then you're going to turn the page and now you're here. So this looks really similar to what it looked like before. This should not say veterans to be notified. What this should say are veterans to be sponsored. Because the first time we did the veterans, we were saying, hey, who do you know that's a veteran that can help the family interact with the VA? Now what we're saying is, hey, we want to get this out to as many veterans as possible. So we're right here. As we wrap up your no-cost benefits, the veteran service groups found that only one in every 200 veterans are even aware of the program and what they're trying to do is educate them all. So we know there's over 1,700 veterans passing away every day. That's over 50,000 families looking for these benefits. And unfortunately, they typically look for the benefits after the veteran has died. So then we say the VSOs have found the most veterans sponsor nine other veterans. So we're here. We've got seven. We did two already, if not at least two. And now we have seven others. So the veterans that are being put in here are not people that the family would notify in the event of your death. These are veterans that you as a client want to sponsor into the program. So then you would collect all of these. You'd click on a little button right there. You collect them all and then you would save it. Again, you're going to download this thing once you do have it saved and ready to go, and it will populate right here. In this case, I didn't add anything, so it would all show up as blank, okay? So on HP Pro, I'm now gonna close this. Oh my gosh, okay, are we done? So now we're gonna come back up here and we're gonna go to the sponsorship program. Okay, so now I'm here, and I'm going to scroll down, or not scroll down, but I'm going to move my cursor down here to the sponsorship program. So let me pull this off right here. When I click on sponsorship program, now, if you remember when Andrew Haskins did this, he had a few people he was talking about activating, not activating, whatever. Notice that I have two people that I entered into the uh, forms. And for each one, they get a $2,000 accidental death and dismemberment benefit. So if I were to click on activate, then that number would increase by 2000. So let's look at the text here for you veteran market people. What it says is everyone you mentioned will automatically receive access to the veteran legacy benefits we just covered. They will also have access to the permanent benefits that we're gonna discuss in just a minute. So now we're letting them know we're gonna transition to permanent benefits. And we're letting them know that these people listed here are going to receive access to the legacy benefits. So as you say this paragraph right here, everyone you mentioned, as you say that paragraph right there, you're gonna click on activate for each one of these. And every time you click on activate, now it's no longer grayed out and the total gifted will move up by 2000 for each one that you activate. So in the text here, it then says, hey, lastly, because we don't solicit veterans and their families, the VSOs require permission for me to contact them. What we're talking about are other people, not the people from the Family Information Guide and not the veterans. These are any additional people that they wish to sponsor, their neighbor, right? People they work with, all of those facts. And what we're saying is we don't solicit them, so we require your permission. And then we say, what Andrew said, is there anybody you wish not to get it? Or we use the word disinherit. Is there anybody that we mentioned before that's listed here that you want to disinherit or not allow access to their own no-cost benefits? Typically, people say, well, no, I don't want to disinherit anybody. Cool. So now they're going to get all of those. Now, once we're done with these, Ashton, what's your question? How can I help you? Um, this might be silly, but can you explain to me what the sponsorship program is? Like, wh where do, like, do they receive 2000 or how does that yeah i'm going to show you right here if i were to go and click on more and click on that sponsorship program this is what they get and depending upon what market you're in so for the veterans they get the burial and will kit they get the gift certificate worth 2000 and they get the no cost law last will and testament kit so these are considered no cost benefits and they have value it takes anywhere between $1,000 to $2,000 to set up your will. They get a $2,000 accidental death and dismemberment certificate, and they get the burial and will kit. So the, these things have tangible value that people appreciate. So when you sponsor somebody, this is what they all are going to get. Does that answer your question? Yep. 
Thank you. Okay, so we're come back here. We're gonna go back down to sponsorship tool. So now this shows up here, right? They're in here. If I want to click on that, actually, that's not what I wanna do. Let's say I wanna add somebody in here and we're gonna add uh, Mary Smith, okay? She lives in San Jose, California, bunch of fives. She's a friend. She's a best friend, actually. And she is a student, let's just say. She has no significant other. When you do that, it asks you do, if you want to send a text. So you see what's happening here? This is a garbage can. So if I want to delete Mary, I can. If I want to put a heart here, what that will do is that will cause that lead to have a star in it when you see it in your lead pack or go, it's important. You want to take care of it right away. The other two choices you have are the SNP group notification and the sponsor receipt. If I click on this, it's going to send a text message from me, right? With the number that I have in HP Pro to John Jones and Mary Smith. So it's a three-way text. Well, it's a text actually that comes from the system, but it gets sent to me, it gets sent to John, it gets sent to Mary. And what we say is it's a basic text. You can test this out for yourself if you wanna try it, put your phone number in there and have it send you a text. And it will just say something about, hey, yada, yada, this is information about uh, this, that, or the other. And basically what you're gonna tell your client to do that you're talking to, hey, John, go ahead and give a thumbs up or say, hey, thanks, Brenna, in this case, for spending time with me today. Because what you want to do is leverage the credibility from the person who's sponsoring the referral. Okay. And then this way, when you go to call them, they'll recognize your number and they'll recognize that you had a three-way text with them. Ronald, what can I do for you? Yes, so I might have a few questions just to ensure that I'm understanding everything that's happening. For the sponsorship program, we were saying that those are also called the no-cost benefits, and there are three things that we give to them, one of which was a $2,000 ad and certificate. How long does that last for? One year. Okay, so it's a one-year certificate. So the persons that we are speaking with, we're asking them if they want to give persons that they know these no cost benefits that we have to offer them? Well, I wouldn't use the word that we want a gift. I would say, you know, uh, Ronald, do you want to sponsor people because the VSOs are authorizing you to do that? In the veteran market, there's three things that we give. In the McGruff or referral market, there's five things. So it depends on what market you're in. We'll tell you what you can deliver to them. Okay. Understood. And and in essence, a part of this gifting is not only the company being for whatever that word is, but it's also a method of us getting additional contacts yes. by so first giving so, value. Yeah. So you're going to talk about the no cost benefits. You're going to talk about the value of those no cost benefits in your script. And then you're filling out either the survey or you're filling out some type of form and the result of that will then allow the person you're talking to to sponsor these people to receive no cost benefits. In this case, the minimum one is $2,000, regardless of what market you're in, it's a $2,000 accidental death and dismemberment certificate. So most people, when you're talking to them, will want to give that to the folks that they sponsor. When we get the list of all those people that drops into our lead pack, those are all considered referrals that we can then reach out to and have a conversation. And the beauty is instead of you meeting them for the first time or trying to call them to set up a meeting time, the credibility is not yours. The credibility is the person that sponsored them. So that's why people who are referrals typically show up more often and they have a higher close rate and they have our higher ALP. Does that answer your question, Ronald? Definitely, definitely does. If anything else, I'll just ask over time, but definitely does. Thank you. Jessica, how can I help you? 
Do they have to purchase a policy in order to give um, the two thousand dollars certificate? No. If you notice throughout this script and what I've done so far, I've not talked about anybody buying any insurance whatsoever. If we look at the script, I'm telling them that these people are going to receive these benefits because you sponsor them. So the entire time I have not tried to sell anything. All right. So now we're here. If I were to click send, it would send that text message to them. I want you guys to try this out, put your own numbers in and see what the text message is that is sent to you. Once I have that completely done, I am then going to hit my floppy disk. If I hit my floppy disk, everybody who's listed, the three people, so it'd be Taylor Jones, James Smith, and Mary Smith, would all drop into my lead pack as leads. Now, here's the beautiful thing. Those are referrals or what we call plus leads. The company didn't pay for that. You generated that. So those leads are yours. That means the company's not going to flush that out of your lead pack. They're, they're there for you at any time to call on. Hopefully you call them as soon as possible so you can sell them. But those are your leads. So there's a way now for you to literally increase your lead pack without the company ever having to give you ever without the company having to give you new leads. So if I get 20 leads in my lead pack, let's just, and you don't, you get more than that, but let's say I got 20 leads and I sat down, I got a hold of 10 people and I had five presentations. So I haven't sold anything to anybody yet in all those five presentations. If I were to get at least five referrals, that's an additional 25 leads. Yeah. So 25 plus 20, now I'm up to 45 leads. So you can see how it can start expanding very quickly and your lead pack becomes really large. We have people with well over a thousand leads in their lead pack and the majority of those leads are referrals. So you can do referrals of your leads that we gave you, or you can even do referrals of your referrals of your referrals. There's nothing that stops you from continuing to reach out to people on the names that were given to you during a presentation. Matter of fact, it's the most effective way to actually sell because you don't have to start from scratch. Most of these people have an understanding of what you're doing and that's why they wanna meet with you. So we're here, we've put all this stuff in, everything looks good. I am going to delete all this stuff though because I don't really want it. So uh, let's see, can I do it? Boom, make it go away. So in the script now, I am here I have finished this and now I'm at B, part B. And then everything after this, doesn't matter what market you're in, it's very similar. So now the next benefit your title receives is the needs analysis survey. These are recommendations by the VSOs are based on your responses provided you qualify for the program. We talk about that a lot. I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm just saying, hey, the next benefit you get is a needs analysis survey and then recommendations are based on your responses. Now, obviously the VA's 893 barrel allowance is not enough. So what they've asked you to do is read this letter. So it says, if the response card show the group letter, if it's PAVIT, then type that one in. Well, we already have that. So we're gonna go back to the notification letter. We're gonna click on display. And when it comes up, we're gonna go to the next page because the second page is actually in Spanish for this particular one. But the key here is the third page. So instead of having you read this letter, because it changes for every single letter that is put out there, we have you read this paragraph. So again, doesn't matter what script you're using, what market you're in, you're just gonna read what this says. Dear Veterans Insurance Program being offered today, and then you read the rest of it. And then you say, after you've read that, oh, by the way, this is kind of key. To transition from the no cost benefits into the permanent benefits means you are going to actually be showing them plans that they could buy. Legally, we have to transition. Does that make sense to everybody? I have to figure out a way to transition and this is what we do. So we read this and then we just say, hey, what that's saying is that after I show you all the benefits, explain how they work and answer any questions you have. If you qualify, you and your family can take advantage of these benefits during your service period, which is today while we meet on Zoom. And when I'm finished, we're gonna have you fill out this report form that goes back to the VSOs. Does all that sound fair? Now, when somebody is listening to you go through that and you're showing them that page, I've never seen anybody balk and say no. And I've watched 
literally thousands of presentations. They, if you have control properly, this is just the next thing you're going to do. You never talked about sale. You never talked about budget. You've never talked about anything to do with a sales engagement. You're saying we're doing a needs analysis. This is the next benefit you have. And once that's done, any recommendations by the VSOs will show up. If you qualify, you can get those. Sorry, I'm looking at my chat. So everything we completed for the family information got automatically populates to the sponsorship program page. Brent, there, no, the, the family information guide. Yeah, okay, I understand your question now. Yeah, whatever you're putting in the family information guide will ultimately make its way into the sponsorship tool. Yes, that is correct. Because those people are gonna be sponsored. So then we say all that is doing is yada, yada, yada. And now we can close this. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to qualify. So then we say in B3, which is page what? I don't even know, page 10. Just because you're a veteran or sponsored by a veteran does not automatically mean you can enroll in the benefits. You still must qualify. If you're too high a risk, they can't let you in. Why in the world am I saying that at this time, Michelle Spinner? Why am I saying it doesn't mean you're automatically allowed to enroll? Why am I saying that? Um, wouldn't they have to be approved? <laughs> We're just letting them know what's <laughs> but <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sneezing over here. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Can you repeat that for me? Yeah, I said, wouldn't they need to be approved first? Like, we're just letting them know what is available to them. No, but I like the way you're thinking. That actually happens later. All we're doing here is we're trying to understand if, in fact, they might be what's called an auto decline, where because of their history, we know we can't provide coverage to them. That's all we're doing. They don't even realize it. So here we say, click on the needs analysis and ask health questions. So we're gonna come here, just like anybody in any market, we're gonna come down to the bottom and we're gonna click on needs analysis. When I do that, you'll notice on the left-hand side that I have preliminary medical questions. If it's under the age of 60, I'm gonna choose super combo. If it's 60 or older, I'm gonna choose the senior button. So we know both were born in 1990 and 1991, respectively. That means that they're, they're both under the age of 60. I'm going to choose super combo. So the four questions I ask is, hey, do you take any prescription medications? Have you had any health issues in your lifetime? Do you use tobacco or marijuana in any form? And have you had any arrest, including DUI? Because any one of those will be an issue I need to know about right now. So the first one, do they take any prescription medication? I'm going to say no for John, but for Mary, we're gonna say yes. Mary, for anxiety, is gonna take Xanax. So we're just gonna type on here Xanax. This is a note to you. And we're gonna say, okay, you take it, how much do you take, how often do you take it? Well, I take 10 milligrams and I take it twice a day. Okay, that is a note for me as the agent. Just wanna know that. Knowing that right off the bat, I know that they still qualify for insurance. There's nothing there that she told me that she doesn't qualify. If somebody said, "Yo, oh, yeah, I take this, that, or the other, based on what I know and my history, my experience, better way to put it, I know they may not qualify. So now I'm gonna do something different. But for all of us here, for what we're doing right now, we're just gonna say, okay, he does not, she does, and she's taking Xanax. Have you any health issues in your lifetime? What we're trying to determine here is, when we say health issues, pervasive chronic health issues. Oh, I've had heart issues. I've had breast cancer. You know, something like that, that is going to impact their ability to qualify for insurance. If they say, well, I broke my arm and I'm taking the Xanax for anxiety, that's not a problem. So in that case, I would put both no. Do you use tobacco or marijuana in any form? If you remember yesterday, I think, or was it today? I can't remember the days are blended together. I said that there are three things basically that affect insurance. One is gonna be your age and the other one's gonna be health and habits. Yeah, tobacco is considered a habit. So if you use tobacco, I showed you in the rate book, your rate will immediately go up. So we need to know that. 
The other thing you need to know is that if you use marijuana in any form, you must be considered a tobacco user. Doesn't matter for the doesn't matter for the reason, whether it's prescribed, medical, medicinal, doesn't matter. If you use marijuana in any form, you must be considered a tobacco user. So we're going to say no for John, but Mary, Mary uses a little bit of marijuana to help manage her anxiety. So we're going to say yes. And then have you had any arrests, including DUI? Neither one of them have. If they did have an arrest, what we then need to ask is it a felony arrest or was it a misdemeanor? If you have a felony arrest, you will be considered an auto decline. If you have a misdemeanor arrest, you will not be considered a decline, but we need to know about it. Okay, so now we have those questions answered. And then we come over here and we make sure that all this information is filled in. So in this case, it's all looking good because we pulled it from the survey all the way across. So everything's looking good. That looks good. Do you have insurance to pay off your house? Well, I'm renting, so I don't care about that. That's an NA. I don't have any children, so that is an NA. Are you retired? No, nope, I'm not retired. I'm still working. And what is your hourly income? We're just going to confirm what it was based on the 150,000 and what did I say? 50,000 respectively. Do you bank locally for checking and savings? That information came from the survey. Yeah. And now we want to know what approach do we want to take? So if we're here, we know in the veteran market, it's going to be the dollar a day approach because typically the veterans are older and we don't want to impact their budget by making a huge amount of numbers. That's the text, right? So we say, hey, we set up the benefits for all veterans using this dollar a day philosophy. Members participate anywhere from a dollar to ten dollars a day, and that's because some are single, some are married, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just obligated to show you what most veterans do in your situation, which is right in the middle at five dollars a day each, and then we'll go from there. Is that fair? And they'll say yes. So I'm just I, I walked through this to show you why we're using the dollar a day, but actually we're still up here. We're filling out the needs analysis, and now we're going to build a program. So we're here and we're not going to go with the hour power. We're going to go with the dollar a day. And we know it's going to be $5 for both of them. Now, what you have to do is you have to pause your screen share. So I want to show you what that looks like. I'm going to pause my share. When I do that, you can only see that's what I showed you before. I'm making changes behind the scenes and you cannot see any of that. Is that correct? Uh, Jessica, is my screen remaining static? No, it's good. Is my, you know, I don't understand what you're. <laughs> yes, it's staying the same. Okay, it's staying the same, thank you. All right, when you said no, it's good, I got confused, okay. So, what I want to do now is I'm going to show you actually what I'm doing behind the scenes. So I'm going to reshare my screen or resume it, resume my share. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the plan generator. I'm going to click on that. The client never sees the plan generator because if the client saw the plan generator, oh my goodness, there's so much going on here. And you'd have to explain everything under the sun. So please, the client never, ever sees the plan generator. So we're over here. Now we're looking at that. We're going to go to the dollar a day and confirm that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change John to $5 because that's what the text said. And Mary, we're going to change it to $5. I want all of you to do this as I do this, please, because you will have to do this consistently. So the first thing I do is change John and Mary to $5 a day. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this product right here and I'm going to change it to triple family. Now I'm going to explain tomorrow what we're doing, why we're doing it. But for right now, I want you to help me cook or bake. I'm giving you the recipe. I just want you to do exactly what I'm doing. Okay. So triple family, once I do that, then I'm going to come over here to this button that says allocate remaining. 
I'm going to click on it. Then this screen comes up. All I want you to do is click on allocate both, then move your cursor and on the word allocate, click that and then click finish. That is the first plan that's being recommended to this client at $304.17 a day. It's okay if you're off by a penny when you allocate. So again, how did I do that? I did it this way. When I started, I moved both of them to $5 a day. So I'm gonna move this to $5 a day. Make sure the second one for the spouse marries at five. I'm gonna take this and start at single individual and I'm gonna put it at triple family. What that then does is set an artificial budget. So at $5 a day for both of them, roughly $10 a day, that's gonna be $304.17. But when I started that, these numbers did not add up to 30417. So the way that you know that is in the MBD column on the right hand side, what we're adding up is the 1350 plus the 9123 plus the 9298, and that gives us $197.71. So that's telling me that I have a budget of 30417. I've only spent $197. So we created the allocate remaining to make it quick so that you can actually spend the entire budget that you've set at $5 a day. So you click on allocate remaining. And now what it's telling you is on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly basis, this is how much the budget was. This is how much you've used. And this is what's remaining. So rather than try to manually figure it all out, I want to make sure that my monthly budget is actually being spent. So I can go over here and allocate, and it will then put a check mark for John, a check mark for Mary on the whole life. And when I click allocate, these numbers in red should drop down to zero, and the numbers in green should now match the artificial budget that I created. So I click allocate, and lo and behold, it actually works. So now I can click on finish, and now I have the first plan that the VSOs are recommending based on $5 a day for both John and Mary. Is anybody not tracking with me where I'm at right now? Micaiah, you're not tracking. So Micaiah, can you share your computer screen with us? No, I cannot because my computer screen is not working at the moment. I'm going along. But I'm kind of confused. I'm confused at how we got all the numbers other than the five dollars a day. Kind of confused. So do you not are you are you saying you don't know how we got five dollars a day? Yeah. OK, so in the script, do you have that up? Can you share your script with us? You're muted. I can't hear you. It's on another screen. I'm using my phone. OK, gotcha. So in the script, I'll bring it up right here. Show everybody, share my screen. There's my script. So right here, I am getting that number from here. Families and couples, the middle plan is $5 a day. Gotcha. In the dollar a day concept, I even say the words. I'm, I'm obligated to show you what most veterans do in your situation, which is right in the middle at about $5 a day. In the middle. So we're going to move this around in the next two weeks, but I'm just saying from a mechanical standpoint, I want everybody to understand, start in the middle at $5 a day. Okay? Okay, just that's just a starting point. I got you. Yep, it's the starting point. So let's make sure that everybody is tracking with me. Mm, Audrey, you did it once before. Share your screen and show us what you got. Oh my gosh, you always call on me at the wrong time. I closed it. <laughs> Why would you have closed it? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I have like 50 million tabs open on my screen and I closed the wrong tab. Okay. So we'll <laughs> wait can't... for you to go ahead and bring it up Let's and see. share it with us. Hang on. Okay. Ooh. While we're doing that, she's going to catch up. Uh, Dale was having problems. She couldn't log in. I remember that. Brent Gamblin. Brent, have we ever chatted? I don't think so. You're new, right? I can't hear you, Brent. 
Yes, I am. Okay, great. Can you share your screen and show me what you got? Uh, I've been, I've actually gone through it. So I was just taking notes and I apologize, but I've, I've actually gone through this before. I've been in the class before. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, well, somebody's going to share with me. Come on now. Is it going to be <laughs> Billy Elliot? Billy, are you going to share with me? I'm going to share with you, but I'm, I, well, darn it. I just lost one of my, hold on. I just lost one of the things. I'll share it, but I'm lost a little bit. So that's yeah. okay. That's exactly why we're here. Cause here's my thought, right? Most of us are probably lost, but most of us don't want to share. So if you share, then I can help you. Okay. So what I want you to do is click cancel right here. Cancel. Yep. I want you to cancel. So the very first thing you did was write. You have John and Mary at five dollars a day. The what? What are we doing? Slow down. The Sorry. second thing I want you to do is change that. Oh, yep. Put your cursor back where it was. Okay. Change that off. No, go down. Oh. Change the A7-1000 option to triple family. There you go. Triple okay. family. Okay. Now okay. that you've done that, click on the green button that says allocate remaining. And go ahead and allocate for both. And then click allocate. There you go. Now click finish. And you'll see that we're spending all $304.17. And in John's case, he has $99,000 of coverage and Mary has 94. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So you did it. Okay. It's you great. Stop sharing. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. We're gonna pick, I just got a actually, little behind there. That's okay. Billy, pick somebody to share. Um. Ashton, because I'm working with her outside of this group. <laughs> <laughs> Ashton. Sorry, Ashton. <laughs> Let's go, Ashton. Ashton. Ashton, can you hear me? No, you can hear me. All right, awesome. Go ahead and share your screen. Let's take a look at what you got. Hold on one second. Absolutely. Audrey, have you caught back up with us yet? <laughs> Audrey, we can't hear you. Have you caught back up with us yet? Sorry, no, I got like a error thing. Um, okay. So I we'll look at it in just a second. <laughs> I'm gonna show you, hold on, let me just finish this one. All right, there we go, okay. so $5 a day. Okay, click on the plan option one for me because you're doing a second plan, which is fine. We're going to get there. We're just not there yet. All right, so this is 304.17. And yeah, Ashton is 78 and Taylor is 85. So you didn't build what I built, did you, Ashton? No, I, uh, I was just so putting in, I was putting in random information before you uh -huh. got there. I was just going through it and looking. So can you make Ashton 31 and Taylor 30, please? Okay, so now you know, we have the name or the ages created. What is the next thing? There you go. Yep, you got to change the A7-1000, not to triple individual, but to triple family. Okay. Gotcha. So look up that. And now you want to allocate the remaining. No, allocate both, not, no, 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 Wait, no, no, cancel, cancel, cancel. See, you, so you're not doing what I asked you to do, and you're going to have problems. So go ahead and cancel that. And what I want you to do is change Ashton's coverage. Yep, that number right there, to make it $15,000. Okay, and now I want you to allocate the remaining and just allocate for both. Should I click that one? Yep. And now when you do that, now you can click finish. Now we've spent the budget of 304.17 and we have coverage at 95 and 120 respectively. Right now, don't worry about the coverage amount. We'll figure out why that number changes between mine and hers and everybody else's later. Okay. But I want you to understand the baking instructions. Set the analysis approach to a dollar a day, set it for $5 a day for each, then do triple family, then allocate for both, 
and then you've built your first plan. Okay. Go ahead and stop sharing. And Audrey, let's take a look at where you're at. Ashton, you can stop sharing. Hold on. I got an error, so let me. Yeah, go ahead and share your screen so we can see what the error is. Yes. I can help you with that. Ashton, you got to stop sharing. Oh. There we go. All right, go ahead. Okay, hang on. Let me get it back up. Um, okay. Bum, 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 bum. Your access was denied. So do me a favor, uh, click on the tab to the right of this one. So move your cursor to the right just a little bit. Uh, just one tab over. This and one? Click okay. On that. Okay. So in okay. here, instead of filling everything out again, I want you mm -hmm. to click on the pre-plan icon in the lower left-hand corner, second from the left. Okay. Click on that. And okay, so what I want you to do now is put in John and Mary at ages 33 and 32, respectively, in the upper left hand corner. Mm -hmm. Oops. Okay. You said 32 and 33? Either way, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'll just. Yeah. 33, 32. Okay. Okay. And now what I want you to do. <laughs> is go down where the salmon colored uh, box is. Yep, and click on California. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and the gender for John is male and the gender for Mary is female. By the way, everybody, when we talk about gender, gender is gonna be what was assigned at birth. So even if somebody identifies differently now from a in life insurance perspective, it makes no difference to us. Because we know women live longer in North America by about five years than men. Doesn't matter how you identify it, it matters on what you were identified at birth, okay? So now I want you to change the analysis approach, Audrey, to dollar a day. Okay. Um, oh, I have to. Oh my gosh, I can't even think right now. <laughs> Um, That's okay. We'll get through this together. Can you change the analysis like, approach to dollar a day? The what? I'm sorry. The analysis approach. Um, there it is. I'm like there. All right. Dollar a day. Okay. Yep. And we want to change both of them to five dollars a day because yeah. that's what the text tells us to do. Perfect. Okay. Uh -huh. And then we're going to change the A7-1000 option mm -hmm. to triple family. Okay. Once we do triple okay. family, now we're going to click on allocate remaining. And then uh, to the left-hand side, the green button. Yep. Yeah. And okay. then we're going to say allocate for both. So put a check mark under mm -hmm. the word allocate both and then click yep. on allocate. Okay. And then click on finish. Okay. And now the three hundred and four dollars and seventeen cents we've spent three hundred four sixteen okay. and moved their coverage up to one sixteen and one seventy three, respectively. Okay. okay. Cool. Awesome. So you can go ahead and stop sharing. Okay. There you go. <laughs> So the next thing <laughs> that we have to do when we do all of this is we build more than one plan. So in order to do that, I'm going to share my screen here. Here is the initial plan that I built. So follow with me. Now we're going to build a second plan. So the way that we do that is we go to plan options. We click on plan options. We highlight or put a check mark here. And now I have plan option one and plan option two. I'm going to change the first name by highlighting plan option one and change it to the word recommended. Your upline may say 
silver or preferred. It doesn't matter. Whatever phraseology you want to use is fine. I like to use recommended. The second one that we're going to do is we're going to call it enhanced. So we're going to change that to enhanced. So we know the first one is done at 304.17. When I created the second one, all it did was copy the first one into a second tab. So I want to go ahead and click on this tab now that I finished over here. And when I do, the name changes to enhanced and the tab is a light blue. Everything else is in a light blue. The first thing I have to do is change my budget because if recommended is here, enhanced should probably be higher. So I want all of you to select for John, $9 a day. And for Mary, select $9 a day. Once you do that, you're going to change triple family to quintuple, or if they're in Florida, it's sextuple. So you're going to change it to the highest family plan you can. Once you have that in there, now you're going to allocate the remaining. And just like we did before, we're going to allocate for both. Click on allocate, click on finish. And now I have two plans, one at 304.17 and the other one at 547.50. The one at 547.50 is at $9 a day, and the one at 304.18 is at $5 a day. While I'm in this script right here, after completing the needs analysis, use the share button or the pause share button on Zoom to bar to uh, allow you to freeze your screen while you're doing all of this in the background. And we then tell you what to build. In this case, I said $5 and $9. And now you're gonna read this text. Once that's done, then you're gonna come down here to present plan. So basically I'm in the needs analysis. I'm doing all of this. I'm gonna pause my share. I'm going to do all that stuff in the background, which you can't see what I'm doing. And then I am going to go into the present plan. In the veteran market, when it shows up, it will look like this. And I am now going to resume my share. And when I do, this screen shows up. When this screen shows up, I could either walk through the dollar a day or if I waited to do that, I can come down here and go into final expense protection. Now, what most students do is they say, hey, uh, give me a minute. I have to wait for the recommendations of the system to you know, come out to me. This might be a time for you to get some water, take a break or whatever. You're letting your client know that because most students can't make the changes in the plans that quick. I think for me, it takes me 20, 30 seconds, give or take. So I can talk while I'm doing it, no impact. Most of your people that you're going to observe have been doing it long enough that they can talk with no impact. But you starting off, you may want to tell your client, hey, hold on a second, I'm just waiting for the recommendations to come back, let the dog out, you know, get a glass of water, whatever, and I'll let you know when I'm ready. Then once you have that, this screen is what's being displayed and now you're walking through the text. Say, hey, let me ask you, John, have either of you had to plan a funeral or participate in planning a funeral? And then you go through all of this. Down here, after you've walked through this text, the first thing you're going to do is click on the freedom of choice. That word right there. When I click on it, lo and behold, that certificate comes back up. This is the same one that we saw in the family information guide. Go ahead and scroll down so that your name is shown right there. And then we say, if you qualify, this is the certificate that you'd receive. All your family has to do is take this to any funeral home and everything's taken care of on the spot. That means your family never has to bring their checkbook or put it on a credit card or ask for help from others. They just take this to the funeral director and say, hey, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my husband, my wife, whatever, was a member of the armed forces and has the freedom of choice and everything is taken care of immediately. Yes, Billy, what can I do for you? Um, I just realized on mine, it is it has my last name spelled wrong with two T's. Does that matter? <laughs> that so, yeah, I don't know. Do you, mind? Do you mind that? You can fix that by going into your profile on HP right. Pro. Okay. Your name. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So once you have that done and once you've read those words, we're right here. And we show the freedom of choice and we walk through that. What you're then going to do is you're going to click anywhere here to make that go away. Once that goes away, now it says, show the allocated amount, press the space bar. Okay, so if I press the space bar now, 
ooh, that number comes up. And then they then I say, hey, now what they've allocated for you, John, is $114,000 for you and $108,000 for Mary. That's for any cause of death, natural illness or accident. You can use it anywhere, even if you move out of state and it never expires no matter how old you get. So all I'm doing is reading the text right here. Okay. Then accidental protection. So how do I get to the accidental protection? I'm going to hit my space bar again. Then that comes up. <clears throat> hit the space bar again. <clears throat> Pardon me. Auto accident comes up. Hit the space bar again. <clears throat> Common carrier comes up. So we're walking through all of this right here in the script. Then we come to C2, we talk about area hospital benefits. Okay, so we come here, if I hit my space bar again, now these benefits come up, $150 for going in the emergency room, $300 if I spend the night, and if I'm in intensive care for up to 14 days, it doubles to $600 a day. That's what this text is talking about right in here. Then I'm asking, is that all that makes sense? And then if it does make sense, I go over here and I click on protection and writers. And then I read what's on the script right here. Everything you guys see on the screen is created to protect you. They are permanent. They act like a mortgage. They also have paid up benefits down the road. Now, what you could do is you could click on these if you wanted. I don't advise that you do it because if you click on cash value, it gives you this screen, which looks really kind of cool. Problem is the numbers on the screen does not match the plan. All this is is an example. So what I've seen most students run into is that people start asking them, well, am I going to have $10,000 when I'm 70? Well, no, you could possibly have more or you could have less. It just depends how old you are and how much you're putting into the program. So I recommend don't show this. What I do recommend that you show is not the paid up benefits, same problem, because it's the same picture, it just highlights this column. You could show this one with no problem because they get this automatically. There's no additional charge for them to get what's called the terminal illness writer. Okay, so we're showing says we're going to pay half of the face amount the moment that you get diagnosed with a terminal illness, meaning you're going to have less than one year to live. And then after the accelerated death benefits paid, once you die, the remaining portion will be paid out to your beneficiary. So if I have $50,000 policy and I have a terminal illness writer on there, I get diagnosed with cancer, I'm gonna get $25,000 up front, and then once I die, my beneficiary will get paid the remaining amount. Okay, and it even shows you what it looks like right there. So one is that is done, I no longer worry about the protection writer, so I click anywhere and it turns it off. So I'm still here. Let's go back to my script. What's my script say to do? Finalize the presentation. So basically, I'm going to reconfirm with the client. Hey, is this the first time someone's gone over the VSO benefits with you? Like I said, it's just my job to explain your burial benefits and go over their recommendations for you. I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm telling you what the recommendation is from the VSO. If you're in other markets, the recommendations are coming from those markets, the credit union associations, the union that someone belongs to. It's coming from them. It is not coming from you. Now, when you're qualified and enrolled, it would come out once a month from the account of your choice. Our veterans requested this because they wanted a benefit that was under their control and nobody else's. A lot of times insurance is paid for through work which means a certain amount of money is going to come out of your check every two weeks. Obviously, we don't do that. We only take money out of your account once a month. Then we say, hey, let's face it, we're all going to pass away. It's something we don't have any choice. So it comes down to veterans taking care of something like this now, or the burden will likely be placed on your family in the future. So now we're here at the beneficiary question. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on that icon right there that says beneficiary. And when I do say, hey, when something happens like a horrible car accident and both you and your uh, John, both you and Mary die, who do you want the money to go to? Well, I want me to get all that money, but they're going to pick whoever they want. Their son, their daughter, friend, family, doesn't matter. They're going to put the name in there. Well, here's an interesting psychological point on this page, Ashton Hale. What is the one number that everybody will remember? Um, 
To me, I feel like the one number they're going to remember is that uh, highlighted red one. Exactly. They're going to remember the biggest number on there and we put it in red and we bold it so that they do remember that. Because no one's going to remember I have 114 and Mary has 108 or if we die in an accident. No, they're going to remember this number. So how do we arrive at that number? That number is the sum of the whole life for both John and Mary, as well as the number one way that people die in accidents, which is an auto accident. So 60 plus 60 plus 108 plus 114 gets you to $343,000. That's the number that people will remember. I have $343,000 in coverage. So then we say, after they identify that Samuel Sweet's going to get everything, doesn't matter to the veteran service organization which program you or any veteran try to qualify for. It's just my job to customize the benefits to fit your needs. So I'm in D3. I just read that. And now I'm going to press the benefit summary button, which is right, not there, not there, benefit summary. I'm going to click on that. Now this screen comes up and lo and behold, it shows us the one that was recommended with all the information. It shows us how much they're going to pay per month and who's going to be the beneficiary if I die in an auto accident, my wife and I, 343,000, who's it going to go to? So now they're seeing all that. And then you're asking this question in D4. They just need to know, do you want to be like most veterans and go with what they're recommending? That's the plan I showed you, setting aside $10 a day for each one of you, or about $304.18 a month. Or did you want to try to qualify for the enhanced program that covers inflation? You will receive a lot more coverage while only contributing slightly more. And then you can click on the enhanced and show them what that looks like. You don't have to explain everything again because you already did that. You can see here for $547 a month, they get $700,000 of coverage. A lot of coverage, a lot of things going on here, right? So Muhammad is $713,000 sound like a good deal for $547 a month to you? For me, I guess it is because it depends on what my age is. But when you put the number seven hundred thousand dollars, you can't help but think that that's a good deal. Yeah. So you think that's a good deal, Micaiah King? Is that a good deal to you? Um, it sounds. I like the better, the first one better. <laughs> is that because of like your budget, right? In your mind, yes. how much money you're spending? Okay, perfect. Yes. Uh, Michelle Spinner. Does the 547.50 sound like a good deal to you? Uh, yes. <clears throat> well, that sounds confident. <laughs> so I mean, I'm also thinking of like my kids. And... Perfect. So here's the point of the three of you. Each one of you has this different perspective, yeah? About the worth. We don't know what your perspective is. And what I'm asking you to do is do not use your perspective when you look at this number, you have no idea what the client is thinking yet, right? The client, you've never asked the client how much money do they have to spend on insurance. You've never given them an insurance number. All you've done is you filled out a survey, a bunch of information, sponsorships, and then you gave them the needs analysis, which is their final benefit. And the result of that is, hey, there's these recommendations. And the first one's at $5 a day or roughly $304 a month. Whether you think that's too expensive or you think it's worth it makes no difference. I have seen people on a $1,000 income buy a $300 program because they're getting older and they're thinking about paying for their funeral and they don't want to pass that expense on to their children. I've seen younger people only want to spend $10 a month and they got a decent amount of insurance, but they just don't have a whole lot of money to spend. So never look at the cost through your lens. Never. It doesn't matter what you think it is. What matters is what the client thinks it is. And if you follow the script all the way through and you literally follow it, we have built value upon value upon value. 
if a client sees value, then typically they will give you two objections. Anybody know what those objections are? Jake, what do you think the first objection is? The number one objection we receive. Receive, sorry, in regards to, can you repeat that? If I ask them which one they want to choose and they look at that, what is the number one objection they would have to buying it? How much it costs. Yeah, they're saying it's too expensive, right? Right. And what's the second objective, Samuel Stroll? What is the second major objective uh, objection do we receive? I have no idea. The objection is I want to think about it which is really a cost objection. If you think, great, usually it's gonna be cost. They need to look at other things, but it's usually cost. Here's the beauty, everybody. You control the cost. You can move the number anywhere you want. It's entirely up to you. So the number one objection that people typically have, we control. If I go to a lot right now and I wanna buy a car and I walk in there and I say, hey, I wanna buy this car. Uh, then I say, yes, I do. And they give me a price point, say it's $10,000. Like, hey, I can't afford that. The people selling that car only have so much that they can do, right? Because they need to make money, et cetera, et cetera. But to us, it doesn't matter. We can go at any price point. We can go up, we can go down. It doesn't matter. Because what we're doing is providing value to them. Now, the higher it is, the better it is for us when we make more money. But the point is, we don't have a threshold. Your upline may tell you, hey, I never want you to go below a certain number because there's not enough value for the client. That's a different story than, hey, I need to sell at least $8,000 in this car to make any money. Yeah. So because of that, you don't have the shackles on you of, hey, we have no idea about how much we need to make. You control that. Yes, Brent, what can I do for you? Uh, just a question. So at the average, I believe, was 1300 to 1500 uh, per policy when you're giving us the averages. That's probably closer to $3 a day, I would assume. So my question is, if we're starting out and we don't, if all they see is something for, say, 350 bucks a month, right off the bat, wouldn't that generate a almost an automatic uh problem for the client immediately if we didn't show at least something a little bit closer to the average or is this are we trying to get them to uh, so you're talking you about the average that we end up selling at right because right. but that average is dictated because we move lower so we start here at 304 as an example but the average pushes us down because most people say i can't afford 300 dollars a month okay i totally understand what well, makes sense for you and your family? Or there's other ways that we can handle that. And we just move the number down. And typically we saw Brenna, she was doing what, $2,300 on average, right? Or what's that, uh, $200 a, a, a month? Still less than the 304, but that's okay. We'll have people that will do five, $600 a month and we'll have people do 30. It doesn't matter. So when we put all that together, we average it out. Usually it's about between 13 and 1500 bucks. So don't, you know, not just you, but everybody don't look through the, your own lens to determine whether that number makes sense, whether or not you could afford it. It really doesn't matter because in your mind, you can afford something. I'm assuming all of you can afford something at some point for insurance, whether you have it or not. If that is the case, so can the client. They can afford something. And if you think about it, I never, in this entire script for the veteran, I never tried to sell them anything. I just said, hey, here's the recommended program. There's an enhanced program. What is the final closing question? Well, the closing question is, hey, do you want to go with the recommended plan, which is X, or do you want to try to qualify for the enhanced program? Now, down here below that, that is the closing question. We tell them what the enhanced program is, and then I give you instructions, A, B, or C. If they recommend, if they choose the recommended plan, we're going to move the E app. We're going to close. We're going to process. We're going to enroll them. If they want to see the enhanced program, if you haven't built it, then you can build it real quickly, or you can just move to EAP and do the enhanced program. If they can't afford it, then we go to down closing, which is the next page. And then you say, hey, typically there's three important questions. One is the program something you're guaranteed to use? Because now what we want to know is, 
hey, do you understand what we just spent the last hour going over? Do you see value in this program or is your family better with this program or without it? And then lastly, is the money affordable or would it take food off the table? We're asking that question because we want to know if, in fact, if it's a budget problem, we have control. We can move the amount down. So I'm not going to go into all the different methods here, but really the key that we're learning today is understanding how to go into the plan generator and build the two different plans at 304.18 and 547.50. So the first thing we're going to do with 304 is this is called the recommended plan. We're going to change it to dollar a day. We're going to move to $5 a day. We're going to go to triple family and then we're going to allocate the remaining. We're going to allocate both. And that'll then have this user spend the budget that we've set. Then we're going to go into plan. Uh, sorry, we're going to go into plan options. We're going to create a second plan. We're going to call it enhanced. We're going to go up to the enhanced. We're going to change this to both at $9 a day. We'll move this one to the highest that's available, in this case, quintuple. And then we're going to allocate the remaining. And then we're going to finish. So now I have two plans, one at 304.17, the other one at 547.50. This process is the most difficult part for people to understand how to do when it comes to HP Pro. And the reason that it's, it's not that it's difficult, it's complicated. The reason that it's complicated is because you're actually talking to somebody and you're trying to do this in the background and they don't see it. So you have the pressure of having to continue a conversation, have to follow the script, have to navigate Zoom, and then you're trying to build these two plans in HP Pro and then show these plans. So back when we first started this, we would start at the very beginning with a script, teach you all the script and all that, and then we quickly realized, you know what? The most difficult part is for people to build plans. So we want you to practice building these plans. Do I have any questions about how to build these two plans? No questions? Uh, Brent, your hand is up. Is that from before? It is from before. Okay, so I'm going to put you in breakout rooms. There are going to be six breakout rooms. So it'll be three or four of you, respectively. I want you to share your screens, and I want you to build these plans according to the veteran script. $5 a day for each person in a couple and at the uh, recommended amount. And then I want you to build a enhanced plan at $9 a day for each one of them. All right, the rooms are open. Go ahead and jump in there and let's see how it works. All right, everybody, we're back from the breakout rooms. So what did we learn in the breakout rooms. How confident are we at building a plan? Jake, how confident are you? Um, today, probably uh, scaled one to 10 in the in the two to three range, but going through the um, script and the uh, 01 um, packet that we got is, is, is super helpful with the, with the screenshots and whatnot. So um, ask me again in a week. <laughs> Wow. So I can't wait a week, right? So I'm going to ask you again tomorrow because guess what? We're going to be practicing this quite a bit. It is the most difficult part, uh, like I said, but you're going to get this, okay? Your confidence level is going to be at least an eight or a nine by the end of next week, right? But we will practice this. So you have a script. We typically use the veteran script because it's the most complicated and everything to go through. All the other ones are fairly straightforward. Uh, Sam, what's your confidence level? Um, yeah, probably a one or a two. <laughs> a one or a two. So that yeah. means to me that you need to practice a lot tonight, right? Yes. And mm -hmm. I, I, I downloaded the scripts, but I don't know where the heck they went. And I didn't know how you got them in your, uh, in your drop down up there. My scripts. Yeah. Like you had a, you hit a, you hit something up there and it brought well, that's the because, up. Okay, my scripts are in my PDF, so I had them open already. So all I did was show them to you. They would be on your desktop if you wanted to do that, okay? 
The scripts aren't in HP Pro. You can't use HP Pro to bring up your scripts. Oh, okay. That's where I was confused. I was okay. like, he's just bringing it right up. And I'm like, I don't know where it is. <laughs> okay, so okay. you've got to download those to your computer so you have access to them, okay? Okay. I've got them downloaded. I just Okay, perfect. Yep, no worries. Uh, Mary Saul, everything okay over there? <laughs> yes. There was a bug that fell somewhere on me, and I was like, is it in my oh ear? My What's your confidence there? level in building plans? You know, after I did a little uh, wrong click with the triple individual mm -hmm. and triple family, and I did it again a few times after that, I feel a lot more confident, maybe like a seven. Okay, and which is fine. You just all need to practice, right? Mm -hmm. Who remembers the homework from last night that was here yesterday? Who remembers what the homework was? Script memorization. Okay. So, Billy Elliot, give me your A1 opening. Go ahead. You want me to call you Sam or Mr. Sweet? No, you can call me Sam. That's fine. Uh, you're muted. Can you unmute yourself? All right. All right. Good afternoon, Sam. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Did you have a great weekend? Yeah, it was Memorial Day weekend. I can't complain. Perfect. I'm glad to hear that. Well, my name is Billy, and I am an American Income Life. Ah, oh, I messed that up. Sorry. I'm with American Income Life. We are a company that handles. Is this not what you wanted us to memorize? Well, no, it is absolutely. But you already. <laughs> so, so we're going to let you up. go. Sorry. We're going to let you. you go. Want me thank to start you. over? Nope. nope. My son's here. Sorry. Hey, yeah, don't again. worry about it. <laughs> I only want one other person to give it a shot. Do we have anybody that was here yesterday that is willing to give it a shot with me? Even Mary Saul is like, don't call on me. This bug landed on my hair. I am not ready. Ashton's like, I got too many cats going on. There's no way I can focus on your A1. All right, I'll give you all a break. However, you all have to memorize it. It is very short. It is easy and you give your personal value statement. So tomorrow I'm going to call on a few of you. So be prepared. So the homework for tonight is to understand HP Pro, navigate your way through it, work with your upline if they want you to take a look at that. And they may ask you to take a look at the scripts. I'm going over scripts tomorrow. I'm going to go over each one of the scripts for both presentations as well as phone calls. And we're going to go and talk about policies. Because now that I've given you the mechanics, I need you to have a basic understanding of what the heck is it that we actually will provide to clients that are considered the permanent benefits. Jessica, what can I do for you? So um, with the greeting that we are doing is that give a personal value statement. Um, can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? What are you guys looking for? Well, the, so as an example, my personal value statement is, hey, uh, I'm a third generation insurance director. My grandfather did it for Metropolitan Life. My father did it for Allstate, and now I'm doing it for American Income. And I chose this company because of the fact that we take care of veterans and all working families. So in the space of what, 15 seconds, I gave you some idea of my background. I gave you some idea why I chose this company and the fact that I might be knowledgeable about insurance, correct? Correct. All right, so I don't expect all of you to have that. There's no doubt, okay. but I do expect you to tell me why the heck I'm talking to you. So okay. Jessica, real quickly, so what did you do in your life before you came to work with us? I worked in the medical industry for the last 12 years. Doing um, what? Helping patients um, and assisting with their health insurance um, questions, and uh, pre-authorization okay. and terminations. So you're an advocate? Correct. So why did you choose us? I chose you because you are a company that um, works, that is looking to resolve somebody's financial issues in long-term. And take care of families on their worst day of their life, right? Because typically we're looking at when somebody dies. So there's a perfect segue. If I'm you, I'll say, hey, my name is Jessica. I just want to let you know for the last 15 years or whatever it was, I've been an advocate 
in health benefits and things of that nature. And I've made a decision to transition that advocacy from health and help families in the veteran market ensure that they get access to the benefits they're entitled to receive. I don't know if that's the Absolutely. one you want to use, but really it's short and sweet right. and to the point. And the beauty is if you do this correctly, when I say correctly, if you're effective at your personal value statement, you can come back to that time and time again in different ways throughout your presentations so that people will now understand who you are. So now I've heard Jessica tell me she's an advocate for health. Hey, that's probably a good thing. I like the fact that she's an advocate. I want to hear her say what she has to say about the company of American income, because I want to hear about anybody else. I want to hear from her. And so now if she's connecting with me, we're building rapport. And if we build rapport, what can we ask for? Forgiveness. Remember I talked about that? If you haven't built a rapport and you make a mistake or have an issue, you're not going to get forgiveness. But if you have rapport, you're going to get forgiveness. Forgiveness leads to sales. Does that answer your question, Jessica? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Jessica's very, very forthright. Yes, thank yes. you. Now stop talking to me. All right. <laughs> no, this is just my job, right? It's only what I do for a living. <laughs> All right, Michelle Spinner. Are you ready with your A1? Oh man, I almost closed the whole window. <laughs> um, no, but I'll give it a go. Michelle, did you hear me say that no one had to do it right now, that you can do it tomorrow? Yes, but you asked. Oh, but I didn't actually ask you to do it. I said, are you ready? Yeah, I, I mean, so I so, said no, but. <laughs> But I'll give it a try. I understand it. So I want everybody to parse words. It's important. Understand what's being said and interpret exactly what's being said. Because when you have clients, they're going to tell you things. You got to take it in. You got to actually be active listeners to make sure you don't miss anything. Okay. So no, you don't have to do it for me, but I do appreciate the offer, Michelle. Thank you so much. Everybody, your homework tonight is you're going to take a look at the scripts. You're going to take a look at HP Pro. You're going to navigate around. You're going to work with your field trainers, whoever they are, for the next couple of hours, whatever it is. But rest assured, tomorrow I'm going to go and talk about policies, and we're going to finish up on – not finish up, but we're going to work more on HP Pro to build plans until we can move Sam from a one or a two and get him up to at least a five. That is our goal. Everybody, I'm going to stick around like I always do for a few minutes. If you have any questions, again, it's been my pleasure. I appreciate your time. I will see all of you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great evening.